Oh, Canada on Comic Book Canada! That's right, our underlying theme on this episode of Comic Book Canon is O oh, Canada. You'll find out in a bit with our fantastic guest, Roger Levesque from Three Men in a Basement. Uh, but before we get to him, we got a lot of other stuff to get to, and I need to bring my partner in crime, my good friend, Christopher, to the fold. Chris, how are you, buddy? How's it going well, today? You know, I, 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 I have a lot of Cana uh, Canadian team hats, and I should be rocking one today. You yeah, but man. I'm not. But you messed up. You know what I am rocking? What are you rocking? Hold on. Let me hold on. What are you rocking? Uh, I'm rocking a 9.8 slab that some lucky winner that entered into the uh, Fresh from the Comic Shop this week is going to win. Spider Woman number one, Art Germ variant. How about that? Pretty sure that's a CGC. 9.8 people. That is right. So exciting. Sponsored by Whatnot, guys. We cannot wait to give that away. We have, uh, we, you guys exceeded the record by far of how many submissions we got. And we have a lot to get to for Fresh from a Comic Shop. But that will be coming up after we get to Roger Levesque. And again, he's got he's to gotta pass the interview to make sure he is a guest co-host on the canon this week. Uh, we'll see. I, I think his chances are good. I uh, just want to mention I am displaced. My daughter's uh, gra preschool graduation was today. I'm a very happy father, very proud. I actually cried. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. And this was only preschool, so I can only imagine what it's gonna be like during high school. But anyways, I'm displaced. I do not have my fresh from the comic shop gets, but it doesn't matter because we have so many from you guys. It, it, it's you guys won't even care. You won't even care. But you know, there's a few things that we do care about this week, and and we're just gonna get right into it with the news as we start off each and every week. By the way, thank you all so much for joining us. As you all do, there's uh, there's there's Dave Collects, yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to be DC the Mechanic. We got Mojo Quid. We got Comic Toby. We got uh, Eleven Bravo Comics. He he thinks that slab is so hot. Uh, we have Sith Lordly. Uh, he's just saying up to Mojo Quid. Uh, we got Travis Tubbs. We got Louis Logic. Oh, by the way, this is a happy accident. This is what we call a happy accident. There's the the Canadian flag on my. My, my vintage police t-shirt. Great band, guys. If you don't know who they are, you, you should. Uh, but moving on, Chris. Chris, why don't we just start? We just get into it. Let's just get into the news because we have a packed show tonight and we got to get through it all, right? Am I right, Chris? So, Chris, you got the first piece right. of news this week. What do you all got? All right, all right, all right. Well, remember, guys, like last week, I think there was no DC news. Well, this week, we absolutely have some DC news. Keeping our fingers crossed and staying positive. I like this because we got the director of the Flash film revealing some Batman costume goodness. What? So the director, Andy Muschietti, has teased on IG the first look at what appears to be the bat suit that's going to be featured in the Flash film. Uh, this is specifically the one that Michael Keaton wore in what movie? That old movie, like in, in the words of Peter Parker, Remember that old movie, Batman Returns? <laughs> what could it mean? What could it mean? Well, we do know that Michael Keaton is confirmed for the film, uh, and he will be wearing a bat suit. So I do think it's safe to uh, assume that it's going to be the Batman Returns suit. I am excited for it, but what's going on? What's in this tease photo, Jeb? What, what is going on in that picture there? I mean, some can say it's kind of reminiscent of The Watchmen, right? Oh. Uh, I really... Let's yeah, but let's not... I mean, honestly, no. We're not going... Let's stop right there. <laughs> pump the brakes. We are not going there. There's no way they're going to incorporate The Watchmen into this multiverse. I mean, I guess they could, though. I guess you they mean, could. With DC? <laughs> you Anything never know. possible with DC. <laughs> let's just hope we get a consistent... Let's just hope we get a consistent output of quality films that's where it starts I just want a good movie make yep. some quality films trust your creators to create and get a strategy for god's sakes but speaking of strategy and good films shazam shazam was not a bad dc film i have to admit i i, I quite enjoyed it and we got a costume reveal there as well from director david f sandberg that is right he tweeted out a little video here let's check it out Why is it so dark? Probably would have been a good idea to have like one light on. Cute, very cute. 
sticks with the tone of the first film. I, I'm psyched for it, but here's also just Jared released uh, some on-set picks that gives us a better look of the suit. Now, guys, remember, this is before post-production, so there's a lot of little things that are missing that will be added. You won't see that wire in the background there. But honestly, I, I, I'm, I'm, it looks a little bit different than the first suit. I don't remember those gold kind of circular things that I guess the cape attaches to. The, mm -hmm. the lightning bolt looks a little bit different as well. The armbands, yeah. too. You know, I mean... I, I'm excited for this film. This was a quality DC film. I was, I was, I, I enjoyed it. Right? It's, it didn't change the world for me, but like, I, I truly enjoyed it. And you know, I'm uh, looking forward for uh, things to come for them to extend and move the needle forward in the DC EU. Chris and I are not DC haters, but they have yet to prove themselves as a consistent, um, uh, a consistent studio that can pump out quality stories of these characters we've known to love our whole lives. So anyways, but moving on, yeah. speaking of the people that do produce the films, we got some amazing news from them. That's right, WB and Discovery have made a crazy announcement. Am I right, Chris? I mean, it is crazy. It is so crazy that I just, I can't sit and lie about my feelings on this. So there's a lot involved here. So let's just dish it out. We got a name. We got a name for the Warner Discovery merger company and that name and, and no no that name is not disney because you know for all the oh it means disney's buying them stop all right <laughs> the official name is warner brothers discovery well that's quite obvious <laughs> this is going to be the umbrella company to you know companies such as hbo cnn cartoon network tbs tnt animal planet and so so many more hey look nice quality lineup there but but this is the image that they shared warner brothers discovery look at this the stuff that dreams are made of this is their slogan that they're running with this screams retro 1980s warner brothers discovery the things that <laughs> dreams are made of like i mean it's just it's so 80s like what are they what's going on here like am i in an alternate reality did i bump my head and like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyways, anyways, the company will be overseen by the Discovery, uh, Discovery CEO, uh, David Zaslav, uh, who this week in a press release, press release did state uh, that the new company, quote, will aspire to be the most innovating, exciting, and fun place to tell stories in the world. Hmm, interesting. This merger uh, does... Uh, put Warner Media, you know, uh, Warner and Discover, uh, second largest media company behind Disney. So look, it's a it's a big move. Ultimately, I, I I think there's some positives that can come out of this, but this announcement <laughs> and this like this slogan mixed with this this um uh, this image is just it's really it's really deflating my feelings on it jeff i don't know about you. it's it's hard not to laugh it's hard not to laugh before we go any, any further on this topic please sing sing the slogan again go for it uh the things that dreams are made of <laughs> yeah what the fuck is this this is some absolute <laughs> horse shit this is garbage comic criminal says it perfectly 11 year old fo first photoshop plus i mean yeah and would you say they're one of the biggest media companies in the world and this is the shit that they come up with Hey, why don't we get some uh, images of some clouds back there? Some corny ass Warner Brothers Discovery font, and the stuff that dreams are made of is what my five year old child said would sound fantastic with this. It's just yet again something else we can make fun of with DC, like on or Warner Brothers. I'm sorry, this is a hot mess. It's just so bad. It's garbage. But I mean, we're harping on these little things, but these little things add up, and they're always yeah. messing this shit up. And I don't know, man. I'm done talking about it. I want to talk about. MCU stuff. Will you let me do that, Chris? Well, you know what? What's cool is because you had to call me out. So, uh, you know, you, I made a statement thinking that we had a confirmation that Tom Holland was on the set of Venom 2. And you kind of said, oh, well, hold on, slow down. We don't have any confirmation about that. But there's kind of some news that, that you know, kind of uh, uh, speaks on this matter. There is, but let's again, let's hold the horses because it's no confirmation of anything. The future right, right. of Sony's Marvel characters is what, what we're talking about here. There's no confirmation that Tom Holland was on the set of Venom 2. 
Uh, but yeah, people are still taking that and running with it and saying confirmed, but it's not guys, <laughs> it's not. But we do have some word on the future of, of uh, Sony Pictures, uh, it, it, Sony's Marvel characters. And it, honestly, it's, it's, it's kind of bright, I would say. It's kind of optimistic the way it's been framed, but we're not gonna find anything out until we see the latest, the Spider-Man 3, which is No Way Home. Uh, Sony, you know, Sony motion, Sony Pictures motion, Sony Pictures, Sony Pictures motion picture group, that makes no sense. Uh, President Sanford Panich spoke to Variety about Marvel character plans. Basically, we need to see what happens after Spider-Man Far From Home, but he gave some teases. He said, there is actually a plan. I think now maybe it's getting a little more clear for people where we're headed, and I think when No Way Home comes out, even yes. more will be revealed. The great thing is we have this very excellent relationship with Kevin, Kevin Feige. Uh, there's an incredible sandbox there to play with. We want those MCU movies to be absolutely huge because that's great for us and our Marvel characters. And I think that's the same thing on their side. We have a great relationship. There's lots of opportunities. I think that are going to happen. I love hearing that. Okay, yep. that 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 gives us reason to believe and hope that finally we'll see a Spider-Man versus Venom. Right? That yep. would be amazing. We saw teases of that in a Morbius trailer where you had a Spider-Man poster like Wanted, which kind of alludes to the fact that this could be after uh, Far From Home where everybody finds out Peter Parker's uh, identity and he's framed for killing Mysterio. Uh, we also saw Michael Keaton there, AKA the Vulture. So there's a lot of good things to take from that, Chris. Nothing is confirmed from that statement, but he's like, I, I think a lot of things that people want to happen may happen. Right. Yeah. And look, I, I said it, it was about, uh, I think, I think it's pushing on close to two years when that, that Sony and Marvel shakeup happened. And, you know, Everyone was like, oh, it's the end, you know, and Tom Holland's not returning. Or if he does, it's going to be specifically in Sony movies and uh, the, the MCU is going to lose Spider-Man. And I, I called it then. I said, stop. I understand the, the, the power move here that Sony's wanting to make. Sony wants control of these characters. They, they have something and they're like, we're not letting go of it. But at the same time, and although they want the public to... Uh, kind of be persuaded by that confidence you know they're like we're sony they know they're like hey kevin kevin <laughs> i love you i need you kevin I, I i need you kevin like they know they know that what they have when paired with kevin feige and marvel studios that's the biggest powerhouse that you can have when it comes to the spider-man characters so i i called it back then and i think we're seeing this come to fruition as you said Nothing confirmed, but um, I, I do believe this is the way that they're going to go. And I think this is the way that it's going to go for many years to come. Uh, this partnership, uh, they've been reworking it behind the scenes, uh, outside of the public eye. They've been very careful to make sure that nothing gets leaked too soon and, and whatnot. We're going to see a very, very healthy Sony and Marvel Studios relationship, I think, at least for the next 10 years, where we are going to really see these characters be uh, fleshed out uh, within Sony properties and then be, uh, you know, in some way or another connected and interlocked to the MCU. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think, you know, it's an unfortunate situation. And by that, I mean, it's unfortunate that Sony has still holds the rights to this. They right. did a good job with the first two films of Sam Raimi, right? They did a terrible job when they rebooted uh, after the third Sam Raimi film. Uh, and then they made this deal with Marvel. And it benefits both parties, right? It sucks that Marvel can't hold the rights to their own character, but this is the best, this is the next best thing when Sony actually realizes that Marvel has a plan, they have the creatives to execute that plan. I think this is going to happen. I, I didn't like Venom. I don't know what to think of Morbius when we when that comes out. Uh, I, you know, Venom Let There Be Carnage trailer didn't really excite yep. me one bit. I will definitely see it. Yep. So we'll see, but let's hope that they start moving closer together uh, because they've done a fantastic job with Tom Holland's Spider-Man uh, and, and you know, those two films that were outstanding. So yeah. um, that's, that's, some, that's some good news. And uh, moving on to some, actually some, some more MCU news that's gonna close out our news for the week is, is, is an interesting take as well. Chris, what do you got? All right, guys. Well, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, backlash of like, where have the Eternals been? You know, where were they when they, you know, when they needed, uh, the Avengers needed help, the world needed help, the universe needed help against Thanos. But now in a new uh, piece of merchandise, 
a an Eternals calendar, they are actually correlating the connection between Thanos and the Eternals. So there is descriptions on this calendar uh, that uh, that indicate what those commonalities are. There is a quote uh, stating, living on Saturn's moon, Titan, the Eternals protect Earth from the deviants and all other forms of cosmic evil. This much anticipated next big blockbuster from the Marvel Cinematic Universe is sure to have fans clamoring for more. Very interesting, very interesting quote right there. Uh, we do know that Angelina Jolie's character, Athena, she is a cousin to Thanos, right? So there's more interlocking connections. Uh, Thanos is an eternal with the deviant gene. Uh, as we all know, Titan was Thanos' homeworld, which of course they've already brought up in the MCU with the uh, Infinity War and Endgame. Uh, so, you know, a lot here to take from this. Uh, it's really interesting sometimes where we'll kind of uh, find these little Easter eggs in. And this can really have a lot of people talking over the next few months about what this means. How th maybe are they going to really connect some dots with this to Thanos and what has happened and why they weren't there? We still got a few months until the movie comes out to find out. We shall see, and maybe there'll be a Thanos appearance if there's a flashback. Who knows? It's exciting stuff, though. I like how everything is all interconnected. That's why we love the MCU so much. All of this interconnect interconnectivity, I mean, based on off of the comics as well. And that, my fine people, is the news of the week. It's, it's It was interesting. Again, way more DC heavy than Marvel heavy. We'll see what happens next week uh, when... Loki comes out. Am I right, Chris? Oh, right? my goodness. Oh, what do we got? We're all Four excited more, about that. Five more days. Oh, man, I can't wait. Uh, we're also excited about our brand new guest, but I have two, thing, two, two things to address. Two things to address, and I saw one right here from Dan De La Torre. Where are you? God, we really need a monitor. Uh, moderator. Um, I don't know. Anyways, oh, here it is. Jeff, do you have Christmas decorations up? I do not. I'm displaced, guys. It was my daughter's preschool gra graduation today. This was a celebration. Uh, I was crying, no lie. I was crying. I had tears coming down, and it was crazy. I, I can't imagine what it's going to be like college or high school or what have you, but it was. that's that's why. Okay, I'm displaced. I don't have my freshman comic shop uh, items. I don't have my comics in the background like I normally do. But it was a celebration, and we're just continuing on tonight while she's sleeping, kind of. Uh, also, I think Serge brought up, will there be a Cosmic Minute today? Yes! They, uh, uh, Tom Tormey makes his triumphant return in the Cosmic Minute, the comic Cosmic History. Uh, can't wait for you guys to see that one. It's another good one. But before we get to that, guys, before we get to that, we have to bring our guest co-host in. Our guest co-host of the week. Super excited to have this guy on here. Absolutely, uh, an amazing person. To say our next guest is one of the nicest and most active members of our community would be an understatement. He is one third of the super group known as Three Men in a Basement with Otto from the Grotto and Dave in the Cave. These guys know their stuff with unboxings, interviews, most recently a, uh, an, an interview with uh, comic legend Jim Shooter. Uh, they got comic book hunts and crawls, but they also, they're also ones who galvanized. Recently, they sponsored and hosted the Connecticut Comic Swap which had people traveling from all over the place, even as far as Alaska. To say it was a success would be an understatement. Uh, here we have tonight, guys, we have the man himself, the cranky Canadian, <laughs> Roger LeVac. How are you, Roger? What is going on, guys? Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, you absolutely. guys just talked about a whole ton of stuff that I disagree with. Oh, you, uh, <laughs> honestly, we have to get into that. But right now, you're right. interviewing to be a guest co-host. All right, let's see. The show. Let's see, I know after a couple of your opinions, I'm not sure I want to be a guest. Host. Oh, okay, oh, that's, fair. Right. that's fair because honestly, uh, I think Chris and I made our decision. All right, moving on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, that's funny. No, that's good. Um, all right, no, seriously, we're gonna move on. We're gonna get to know you a little bit, and then we'll make our decision. That's all. Yeah, fair. let's go. And honestly, Chris and I, we 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 love the differing opinions and talking things out. Maybe you'll sway right. our, you know, maybe you'll change our opinion, but I doubt it. We, we, you know, we're pretty stubborn in our, in our ways. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. So as we all know you, you are the cranky Canadian. We'll get to that. Why you're the cr cranky Canadian in the bit, but let's just a little, a little, these are, these are kind of softballs here. Easy, easy just to knock out the park. Um, you hail from Canada, but you've settled in Connecticut. Can you just briefly tell us how that came about? Well, I was actually born in Connecticut. So my, oh. my, my yeah, my parents got married in Canada. They had four kids. I'm the youngest of seven. 
Wow. So, so even though the first language I learned was French and, you know, when I started school, I didn't really speak English very well and all that. I was actually born in Hartford, Connecticut. Okay. Oh, Harvard. Okay. Not bad. That is yeah. the um, insurance capital of the world, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a great claim to fame, isn't it? Quite interesting. <laughs> By the way, uh, we have, uh, you know, Dan saying Roger's already starting off cranky. He's in the- <laughs> <laughs> too much. Come on, let him, let, you know, let him relax. Yeah, sorry, him. sorry, I should have eased into it. I apologize. But, but but honestly, where did where did the cranky Canadian come from? Because you are one of the nicest guys, even when. You- <laughs> so it actually started from back when I first started uh, in construction. I'm a, a electrician by trade. I've always worked for large contractors, and anytime we were on a project with the sheetrockers, I always spoke French to them. You know, and it not only helped me keep up my French so that I can speak it when I'm talking to my relatives. Uh, but it was just like way to joke around with another trade. We kind of had this inside thing. So it's kind of like when you call a really big guy tiny. It's <laughs> how I got the word cranky. Because because like I would show up on the job and, you know, and I'm, I walk in the morning with my coffee and I'm smiling and I'm saying good morning to everybody. You know, and a lot of people are miserable in the morning. Like, oh, great. Here comes the cranky Canadian, you know. So for a long time, many, many years, that was my nickname on the job site was the cranky Canadian, even though it meant the op. I really was the opposite of that. <laughs> That's fantastic. By the way, Sith Lordly, the, the, the infamous Sith Lordly, we love him to death. Uh, he's definitely cranky. He's calling you out as well. But bottom tier collector, <laughs> Harford, that's where Triple H is from, I believe. That's right. Same last name. We're distant cousins. Oh, wow. Yeah, his, his last name is Levesque. Yeah. That, is, that is honestly an exclusive here on Comic Book Canon. <laughs> we are going to take that and run with it. All right, now we're just going to get into just we got the same nose, man. Oh yeah, I see it. The same physique, <laughs> absolutely. Same physique and the hair as well. Uh, so obviously you're a Montreal Canadiens fan. Yes, Joe Habs, right? That's right. Uh, so tell us who who is your favorite Montreal Canadian player of all time? Uh, it's actually Saku Koivu. Mm. Yeah, I've got a couple of his jerseys. Um, you know, it's easy to say Patrick Watt because he was winning cups when I first started. He can go, you know, I was able with at the time having a team here in Hartford, I was able to see Guy Lafleur uh-huh. and Bob Gainey and Larry Robinson play. Um, but my, you know, the most I've ever gone to Montreal in a span where I went to like, you know, three dozen games in a two-year span, Saka Koiba was their captain. He got cancer. He beat it, came back and was the captain again. He was just as strong as he was. It just – he was a very pol- polarizing character for that team because it was one of the first times a city fell in love with a Canadian player that wasn't French. Oh, interesting. That's yeah. beautiful. Because they, because they, because I mean, to this day, they won't, they won't hire a coach that doesn't speak French. So that's crazy. Okay. Yeah, the people, the owners, they're very adamant about that thing, which is stupid. Instead of getting a good coach, we're just going to get one that speaks French. That's why you get a lot of recycled coaches in Montreal. Yeah, it, it's a tough town to coach in because I mean you got your standards are so high. I mean, it's like it's like being a manager at Yankee for the Yankees, you know. Exactly, and you know another. Well, we won't get into it. We are, I have no Yankees <laughs> questions for you. I'm a Philly <laughs> fan by all the way. I think we got John Leclaire from you in a trade, I, and John Leclaire is my favorite player of all time. Uh, yeah, favorite Philadelphia Flyer. I love him. By the way, bottom tier collector is a Pittsburgh Penguins fan. I can't stand Sidney Crosby. I'm sorry. Uh, he's the such a cry baby. He's, he's a just, crap. Yeah. Ever he's since just, the league has been worse since he's been in it. Agreed. They One literally of, made rules just to protect that kid. Agreed. Uh, you're doing well on this interview. You are doing very well. <laughs> you're pleasing to uh, my I, sensibility. I, I don't know anything about hockey other than uh, a guy named Wayne Gretzky. So yeah. I, I guess well, that's because I'm out in Cali. And- he is the great one. You have the San Jose Sharks, and oh, by the way, Mon- uh, Hartford Whalers. You ever figure out who the guy that says two minutes left? Two minutes. Like uh, I-, I couldn't stand that, and I, I went to a few Hartford Whalers games myself. Uh, all right, another. You're, you know, you are a diehard sports fan, and as I understand, you are a Michigan, University of Michigan fan as well, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What is your favorite all-time player from the University of Michigan? Because you got a lot to choose from. You got football and basketball, I, I believe. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if there's any other. I guess there hockey are, too. Right? Yeah, there are a lot of a lot of, uh, a lot of sports. And my son, he's even worse than I am. Like he's watching like rowing and stuff. Like it's he's he, every piece of clothing he has has the Michigan logo on it. We're actually taking a road trip, and we're going to this big house this November to see Michigan Ohio State. Oh, nice. Yeah, Michigan, we, Ohio State. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. All so, right. Uh, but so if I had to pick, so for basketball, Chris Weber, um, mm. oh. and uh, Dwight Howard is probably my favorite football player. Okay. All right. Chris Weber. Chris Weber was a 
Six. It knows how it just revolves back to Philly, yeah. by the way. Two, two, yeah. two Oakland, two Oakland players too, because yeah. they both play for uh, that's right. Warriors and the Raiders. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They sure did. All right, doing all right, doing all right. Now Chris does a really good job with this next segment. It's it's more regional. Uh, it's about you know, it, obviously we went with the Canadian tip. So Chris, I'm going to let you take this one away. All right, Roger. Here we go. So this is how Canadian are you? Oh boy. <laughs> So I'm going to ask you a few questions, and, uh, you know, it's, it's it's either one or the other between two choices. Okay. All right? All right. First one up. Uh, I, I know you, 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 you're you into your music. I know you're into, you, you know, hip-hop as well. So here's one. Here's a couple Canadians. Drake or The Weeknd? Oh, I hate Drake. <laughs> That's a good answer. I hate Drake. Hey, Jeff. I'm gonna... I, I think you can bring him on. He, we got Honestly, it. man. I hate Drake. Drake you ruined rap. Formality at this Drake, point. And, Drake and Lil Wayne ruined rap. They just, it's just. It's just, that's not you know he started the whole whining era of of rap. Oh. I hate the guy. I just so and I don't hate the weekend. So I guess the weekend is what I'm gonna pick. <laughs> I do. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah. We. All right. All right. Next up, keeping with the music theme. Another uh, two. I, I think both are, are some great Canadians. Alanis Morissette or Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> oh, Alanis Morissette. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, Sarah well, McLaughlin has a great voice, but man, she could put you to sleep. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I this like one right here though. This this yeah. could be you know uh, um this could take oh yeah yeah right yeah here. yeah depending we, on your I hand. don't know you know we, you had us you got us with the Drake <laughs> comment this one <laughs> this I don't one, know you man better this get might, right. this Honestly, might do you in you better get right this I mean, might you do you in better all right play Nickelback one more one more in the music <laughs> realm here here we go. If you say Nickelback, I might duck. <laughs> if you say Rush Nickelback, or, or Nickelback, I knew it. I, I don't think I think all Nickelback music should be destroyed and banned from being played anywhere, whether it's the radio or Spotify. Uh, and even even if they weren't as bad as they were, not many people take over Rush. Uh, yeah, honestly, I, I, I don't. There's a lot of hate for Nickelback. I don't like them by any means, but. I'm not sure where all the hate comes, but it, honestly, if you, if somebody puts Nickelback over Rush, yeah. like over Rush, and granted, I'm a drummer, so I have my allegiance to Neil Peart. Yeah, I, I mean, also Rush, saw Rush is one of the all-time greats. I mean, one of my favorite concerts of all time was Rush in Hartford at where the Whalers play. I cannot remember yeah, what Civic that. Center. Yeah, Civic Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was an amazing yeah. concert. And they did a song with Bob and Doug McKenzie on their Christmas album. I mean, who take off to the Great White North? I mean, that's fucking phenomenal. Exactly. So. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. All right. Good there's, stuff. There's, good stuff. Lots of lots of good uh, Canadian uh, musicians. Some others are just yeah, not so hot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on. How about some? How about some 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 actors? Some comedians. Here's some two two two, two good ones here. All right, this might be a tough one. Jim Carrey or Ryan Reynolds? Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Okay. Ryan Reynolds. Right. I, if it was before, if you had asked me right after he did Green Lantern, I'd answer differently. But. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what he did with the Deadpool character just really takes it to a whole new level. Very fitting for our comic book canon show as well. Yeah. Uh, all right. But, hey, we can't forget uh, Jim Carrey's uh, uh, Riddler. Not too bad, huh? Yeah. <laughs> for a, a wacky film. Yeah, I, I, don't dis <laughs> I don't dislike him. Mask was pretty cool, you know. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Going back to sports, because I know, uh, you know, I'm a big baseball head here, too. And I should have been rocking my Montreal Expos hat Expos, today. Yeah. but. Man, all right, two greats, two greats. Andre Dawson or Andres Galarraga? I could take or leave both of them, man. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Not, You're a Yankees fan, right? Yeah, I'm not familiar oh, enough with them. Oh, yeah, though. yeah, yeah. That, right, that's that's right. right. I'm not familiar <laughs> enough with them to uh, make a decision either way. That's fair. I, I'll go with whoever you say. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm, I'm picking Andre, man. He's, he's right. the man. I'm and I think one. if Andre played in uh, – uh, Coors Field like like Coors Field, Coors Field like Galarraga did. Andre probably have a, a 150 to 200 more home runs. Yeah, the field All right. makes it sure. Yeah. Okay. This is a fun one. This is a fun one. All right. Are you ready? Uh huh. A boat or about? <laughs> Depends on where I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's fair. Well played. Uh, but it's def definitely a boat for me. <laughs> okay. Awesome, awesome. A boat. A boat. A boat. Another one I like. I worked with the with, with the um, a girl just, that was just from... to kind of spin off of that. I'm yes. fr I'm French Canadian, 
So when I go right. there, it's French. So their English word, they, they don't. That's like that's a funny word that's said in the English speaking part of parts of Canada, right? Uh, yep. But we definitely, uh, definitely uh, used enough time to make fun of Canadians in movies, where I know exactly what you're right, talking right. about. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I had a coworker when I worked at Starbucks um, when I was a teenager that was from Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she used to say, I mean, it was, oh, it no. was really like, she was like, do, <laughs> you want, uh, yeah, do you want two tea bags, tea bags? And, um, <laughs> and I just remember the way she talked. I love, I loved it though. Like I'm not making fun of it. I, I actually really kind of love that accent. I think it's fun. Hey, we get the, <laughs> we get the Boston accent here in Connecticut. You there know? you go. Oh, bah, yep. haba. oh boy. Hockey cow, All, right. Bah, haba. All right. Let's get into some grub. Let's get into some food. All right. All right. Poutine or chili fries? Well, first of all, you have to say it correctly. But I'm going to take a giant bowl of poutine over chili fries poutine. any day, <laughs> twice on Sunday, bro. Ooh. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. What do you think, right. what do you think Jeff? I, I think this is great. I also I don't want to go about, like, not about – I don't want to go about Luke. not plugging Roger here. Everybody needs to follow <laughs> him on the Instagram. Y'all need to follow uh, Three Men in a Basement. Their link is below, by the way, right below. Click on the link. Y'all better subscribe to them on YouTube. Follow them on Instagram as well. Good people that know their shit about comics and put out some amazing content each week, especially Roger's show, uh, The Cranky Canadian, every Monday. Is what time? 7 p.m., I think? 7 p.m. Eastern time, yep. This so, Monday we got Doug Bratton on. There you go, guys. And he, By the way, this guy is an excellent interviewer, and I enjoy watching, as you will too. I promise oh, you. You that. I don't think we've ever steered you in the wrong direction of any of our content creators, our fellow collaborators, or anything like that. So um, this one right here. Oh, by the way, I just want to mention to give a shout out to you guys doing that 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 the uh, Connecticut comic swap. Uh, that was a huge undertaking, uh, and it was just the three of you guys basically putting this on. Yeah. Uh, so kudos to you guys again for for being like kind of the glue, bringing the community together. For this event, it's it, it's awesome, and and we look forward to more of your events. You said you're gonna have, you may have a table at um, what is it? Terrificon. Terrificon. Yeah. Um, gonna put that, that in the worst. That's uh, it's the last week. It's like July 30th to like August 2nd or something like that. Okay, you guys all follow yeah, their, their Instagrams. Yeah, you, man, that's the con to be at. Man, it's in the middle of a casino resort. You can't go wrong there. Honestly, <laughs> there's everything you need. All right, everything you need is in the casino. I, I do yeah. believe. Uh, uh, all right, so this one we weigh very heavily, uh, knowing that we know you like this genre. When we ask this question to people, we weigh very, very heavily, uh, and this could make or break you for the rest of the show. Okay. Uh, give us your all-time favorite hip-hop group. Go. Gangstar. Okay. All right. Welcome without, to the phone. Without, without a question. Gangstar. Guru. No hesitation. Yeah, no hesitation. Guru was my man. Rest yep. in peace. You know, Primo still putting shit down, still yep. making the new people look silly with the stuff he's doing. Gangstar, 100%. Yep. Welcome to the show. You have made it. There's like, there's not even a question here. I mean, I feel like, Chris, I know you well enough that you're agreeing with this as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Guru, man, he just uh, – I had a chance to uh, to meet him back in uh, 2009 when we did a, a show. I didn't get a chance to rock the stage with him, uh, but we, we did a show for him when he came out to California. And, uh, you know, just another one that just passed way too early, man. You know, yeah. a, a unique voice that would never be – that will never be duplicated, man. Yeah, smooth and smooth and it just flowed and, you know, being with Premier didn't hurt. <laughs> yep, yep, absolutely. All right, great answer. We really appreciate that answer. We are moving on with Roger as our guest co-host for All Comic right. Book Canon. He, he'll definitely. Now I'm, I'm going to switch some shit up. Go for <laughs> it. Man. Throw some shit our, throw some shit our <laughs> way. But before, before we do that, uh, we have you know we're all here. I know what you're all here for. It's 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 fresh from the comic shop. But before we do that, look at this guy, Tom Tormy. Yeah, hey, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Tom has, has been dealing with uh, a lot of things going on in his life for the past month or so, and he has not been part of the show. He has been, you know, he's taking time away from producing the Cosmic Minute, but we have a brand new Cosmic Minute after Fresh from the Comic Shop, which is our next segment. Uh, but Tom, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We are so happy you're back. We're so happy that you're doing well, and we're super excited to share this newest installment of the Cosmic Minute. But that's that's not next, guys. No, Chris. <laughs> You got to tell me what's coming up next. Let's go. What do we got? Fresh from the comic shop. 
fly from the pressing <laughs> salon. That's right, you all. Oh my gosh, this week, this week, guys, has been incredible. We have surpassed our, I think we had 35 submissions last week, and that's submissions we, we brought to air. That doesn't include the ones we did not, your extra submissions. Uh, it was insane to sift through. This week is over 50. Uh, we are very happy to get into it right now because, as you all know, we are. This, this is sponsored, and you can win a 9.8 slab. So before we get into That's the whole disgusting. segment, we are going to share the slab one more time, tell you how to do it for next week, and explain how this is going to work. That's right. We have a beautiful 9.8 Spider Woman number one art germ variant. Look at that thing. That thing is gorgeous. What's his name? Like Stanley Art Germ Lee or something like that? Yep. That's um, absolutely. Yep. Just gorgeous. Germ, that man. is. That is on on behalf of whatnot. They are helping. They are helping us uh, promote fresh from the comic shop. We will be giving that away. We will decide the winner on Tuesday of this coming week, and I'll tell you how we're going to decide. But first, before we tell you how you're going to, we're going to decide. We're going to explain to you what whatnot is. That is right. Whatnot is an app that Chris and I actually do believe in. We are not bullshitting you. We would not. We would not have this part of the show if we did not believe it. It is. Whatnot combines the safe buying platform of eBay with the video component of Twitch. Their mission is to bring together collectors and enthusiasts to safely buy, sell, and connect. Uh, this is just a perfect example right here of somebody winning a Funko Pop. The user interface is incredibly easy. Uh, it's, it's, it's very intuitive, and it's literally like watching eBay, but video is much better than a boring kind of static you know, uh, auction. So we highly recommend this. And you need to be, you need to sign up for a whatnot account to win one of these 9.8 slabs. Here are the rules. Chris, I'm going to read them off and you, you reiterate what I said. Let's do it. You must, you must be signed up to whatnot. Uh, the link is below in our description. Uh, you must be signed up to whatnot using our, our code. You must <laughs> follow comic book canon on whatnot. Uh, and then it's fresh from the comic shop. You post a pic of your fresh gets on Instagram. You tag us. What's the tag, Chris? What's the tag? It's way down there. There it is. Comic book canon. And then, Chris, you, they also have to use the hashtag. FFTCS. That is right. And here, guys, this is how we're going to decide winners. From this show, we are gonna decide, we're going to pick two finalists. We will post those two finalists for you to vote on on Instagram on Monday in our stories. The way we're going to decide on these two finalists is these three criteria. Presentation of your picture. How beautiful do you make the picture look? Cover, the cover of the actual comic book, and the uniqueness of the actual comic. All of these factor in all of together. This is subjective, guys. That's why, you know, it's going to take some discussion, but our guests each and every week are going to decide one of those winners by the end of the, uh, the segment. So we have Roger here. He's going to be the first one to pick. Once again, presentation, cover, and uniqueness of the book. So we're going to get into it right now. Roger, are you ready? That's a lot of pressure yeah, on you. And, and people in the chat, if this is one of your books, I take bribes. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> we we will we will uh, pursue all legal actions. Uh, so don't listen to him on that on that uh, acclaim. All right, so here we go, guys. Normally, I have a fresh get too, but this week again, my daughter's graduation, a lot of stuff going on. So it's going to be Chris and Roger showing off their fresh gets, and of course, you guys. So Roger, you are the guest. You are going to show us your first fresh get of the week. The first one of this week. What do you got? What's your first fresh get of the week? All right, so this is. Started a bit of a rabbit hole for me. Um, and I know I might have showed it before, but God, I freaking love this book. Oh, look at that. The Italian version of Amazing Spider-Man. That would fall under... Which, well, we're doing one at a time, Roger. You're breaking the world. No, this is going to go together. Okay. This is the rabbit hole. Yeah. So this, is the, this is that's the Netherlands, Netherlands, Netherlands version of ASM 3, 300. This that's is the book allowed. that started it. Nice. That's beautiful, man. Here's the deal. I would think, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, that falls under a unique book right there yeah. or books. Those are definitely Yeah, unique. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, going to the criteria for all of you all uh, that submit your, your Fresh from the Comic Shop entries, definitely unique. But, um, you know, again, like you said earlier, Jeff, it is definitely subjective. So, you know, you guys can play around with the books that you have and submit. And, and you know, we're not limiting you to how many you can enter. It's just that we can only show one off on the show. So, you know, 
hey, if you get around to hashtagging five, six pictures during the week to submit, we might, you know, we might pick one that could possibly be a little more unique or or whatnot. So, you know, you you have a, a wide range of uh, opportunity to to get absolutely picked, sure. We're going to get into it, guys. I know this is this is the first time we're explaining the rules, so we're taking a little bit longer than we'd like to because we like to bang through segments. This is not going to be a bang through yeah. segments. You guys can take that to another level, bang through, by the way. Don't. Pause. Uh, all right, moving on. Another thing that people normally do is they put two issues in one picture. It's going to be hard to pick a winner from, from that, but we are happy to show off your fresh kits. So a lot of you guys don't even care about the prize. You're just excited to show off your books, which makes this segment so popular. And we really appreciate that. So starting off, we got Caution Comics, Strange Tales, 170, yes. 179. Some recent pickups, some low-grade Strange Tales. One se- uh, I'm thinking, a, he says, I'm thinking a 3.0 or a 4.0. And he paid like $25. And he makes it. Tells y'all to support your local comic shop. And you should. 100%. No doubt. Uh, nice. So th- thank you so much, Caution Comics. That's looking great. Next up, we have Carcamus with Men in Black Volume Volume One, Number One, the first K, the first Z, J, and then the first Z. That is really cool. I have never seen this book before. I know of it, uh, but uh, that is that's really a great get. That to me, that's kind of falls under unique. Uh, and then we have Son of Comics. Thank you so much for all of your submissions. We brought this one in right here. Damnation, Johnny Blaze, Ghost Rider, Number One. Uh, signed and sketched by Clayton Crane. Clayton Crane is badass. This one is amazing, guys. This, this, I mean, it could win. It could win. Peter versus comics. He showed up <laughs> a GCW box. He said, apparently, <laughs> hard to get in Canada. I was able to pick up one of these for a decent price today. They're like ghosts lately. This is a funny one for Comic Canon, fresh from the comic shop. Give these guys a follow and check out their YouTube live stream. Thank you so much for their <laughs> shout out, Peter versus comics. Guys, yeah, like this, like this video, subscribe, subscribe to Three Minute in the Basement. We got a whole link of great content creators below. Uh, we got Basement Brothers Collectibles. Uh, as he says, underrated spec, Fantastic Four, 319, picked it up for $2.50 on eBay. Origin story of the Beyonder, possibly the second most powerful being in Marvel Comics, and the one above all is, is stronger, in my opinion. Beyonder is the major driver for the Secret Wars. Also, it has him and Doom battling on the cover with the cover appearance of Molecule Man, another highly powerful reality warping character in Marvel Comics, totally underrated and undervalued, in my opinion. That's a lot going on there, but yeah. I love this Ron Friends cover. I love Ron Friends. Uh, and we'll show one more before we get to yours, Chris. I love this, guys. I love this one. Uh, PH Comics 1, first appearance of Star-Lord, Marvel Preview Presents. Uh, that's honestly, man, this thing falls off and then they bring in another Guardians of the Galaxy film that picks up again. But I, I really, really do enjoy that, uh, that book. Uh, thanks so much for that one. PH comics one, Chris, fresh get of the week. What's your first one? All right. My first, uh, pick was an a okay. So, uh, I, I showed it off on my live stream earlier, but I got, I got to show it off as a fresh get because I'm just extremely humbled. Um, uh, my oldest son is a big fan of uh, Miles Morales, so this is going to go on display in his room. It is a uh, Spider-Man by Miles Morales, Spider-Man number 25, mm. the uh, Comic Mint uh, exclusive variant with the uh, UF4 cover swipe, 9.8 EGS slab with the custom label. Beautiful. Big shout out to uh, EGS president Tony Trum- Trumbetta for uh, sending these this book to me as an A-OK. Truly, truly appreciate it. Uh, Tony sometimes is watching the show. I don't think he's here tonight, but hopefully he is seeing this on the rewind. This is just absolutely amazing. My son was was psyched. So uh, we're going to put that uh, in his room. Certificate of Authenticity with greater notes. Guys, That's a big cover, man. shout out to EGS. That's fantastic. That cover yeah. is absolutely fantastic. And again, the presentation of EGS, uh, you know, I like what they do. And I like what they're about right there. All right, Roger, I hope you're paying attention to all these books, man, because you I are am, going man. to be the judge, jury, and executioner. That makes no sense here. You're just the judge. I'm just the uh, judge, But you will be choosing one book from these submissions here, uh, and we're going to get back into it right now with – who do we got? Who do we got? Oh, good friend Michelle, a.k.a. Moonlit Comics. Another day late, hashtagging for first appearance Friday, but I couldn't wait to share this one. I scored myself a grail yesterday, an affordable mid-grade copy, but still – an absolute badass piece of comic history and all mine to a Dracula issue one, the first appearance of Count Dracula in Marvel Comics based on Bram Stoker's 1897 Dracula novel. 
We also have the first appearance of Frank Drake, a descendant of Dracula. Now, this is this is interesting. Y'all should know this, especially um, with comic book history, and I'm glad she put this in here. Until 19, 1971, supernatural monsters like vampires, werewolves, and zombies were banned by the Commons Code Authority. The Commons Code was revised in 1971 so that monsters with literary merit could be used in comics, hence the debut of Count Dracula in the 72 series. Guys, they also wouldn't allow couples to sleep in the same bed or people to use drugs or anything <laughs> else like that it was garbage it, they sucked and i'm glad that stanley i you, you see those issues in the, my background uh stanley did that three uh issue arc the 97 90 96 97 98 of amazing spider-man where they did the government asked them to do uh drug issues uh the government was like or you know the common code's like no you're not getting these labels on here if you do these drug issues and stanley's like Screw off. I'm, we're going to do them anyways. And they were the first issues not to have the Comics Code Authority on them. People were like, yeah, why do we have this shit on here anyways? All right, moving on. Yeah, that Thank was a great cover, comic. man. That's an awesome Neil Adams cover. I oh, love it's that beautiful. Book, Look at this thing. Look at yeah, that. They did a carnage that they cover swipe it at me. It looks just mm -hmm. as awesome. By the way, that's our judge right there. And he's 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 giving props. So that's, you know, the saying. All right. We got Half Court 757. Batman Ooh. 108. I do believe this is a variant. And I'm not sure who it is, but I am. Loving this this variant here, especially with the neon going on in the back. She's just a cool looking character. A lot of people are giving her shit. I, I think she's great. I, I really like this character. I haven't read the issues yet. I'm on 106 or 107. I can't remember which, but I'm liking the run by Tinian, guys. I'm liking the run. All right, Nukes Comics. Thank you so much for your submissions. This is just one of them. Another more, another Miles, uh, another Miles cover. I really enjoy. I picked up this copy, this copy of Miles Morales Spider Man issue 24 from Zeus Comics. It's got a great cover by Torin Clark. And an appearance by Kamala Khan. Great action and story. All right, before we get into Roger's uh, second get of the week, we got Comic Ozzy. Here we go. Minty Fresh. When 129 gets out of range, you look elsewhere. Kitty Pride, a.k.a. Sprite. Also, Wolvie's new duds in a tie into Alpha Flight with Heather Hudson. Hoping one day Alpha Flight will make it to the big screen. We all are hoping that for that as well. Uh, by the way, that's a great example of presentation there, guys. Uh, I am liking how Comic Ozzy has presented his book. All right, Raj, what is All your right. second fresh get of All the right. week? So this one um, came in the mail late last week. I want to show these first. Have you guys ever seen these? We had a vendor selling these at our swap, and it holds a top loader for my second book. Oh, nice. This is a sketch from Ron Leary Jr. He didn't have time to finish it uh, at the show, so he took it home and – Added a whole shitload of cover and stuff uh, for the same price I paid for a sketch. Oh, that's beautiful, oh, wow. man. And that, that is, is, if you go beautiful. on his uh, Instagram page, you actually, he has like a video where he, you know, like fast forwards it and he shows how he's paint. He's actually using paintbrushes and touching up all the white and making like the zipper and absolutely oh crushed it. And now I have this cool little frame to hang it on so I don't have to worry about it. That frame is awesome, man. It, it, it's yeah. it's nice better. and light. It's, it's very, like, you barely see it. And, and he had them for slabs too, but I, you know, my biggest problem is I have a couple commissions and I have them in frames, and I just don't like the way they squish up against the glass, you know. Yeah. <laughs> this is nice. It's in a top loader. It slides right in. You can screw this thing to the wall and then it's ch and change the top loaders over and over, you know. I just, but uh, this sounds corny, but it's it's also got like it, it's like the, the 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 clear plastic, whatever, fine, but. This gives you like a rustic look that you may yeah. be going for in your living room. Like you put that over a fire. Well, you wouldn't put that over a fireplace, but you get what I'm saying. I'm, like I might. Don't judge like, me. If you have enough protection there. <laughs> it's really cool looking though. I really, that's a great idea. We, we should get that information and put that yeah. out here. Maybe have them on the show. One I mean, day. look how it's so simple. There's two holes in the back so you can screw it to the wall. That's so cool, man. I love that. I love that way better than slides. The yeah. It slides right in. Oh, I'm in, man. I, I need those. So I bought I two of them, and now I just got another sketch from Sketch Card Girl from Instagram. Now I'm going to have to get some more of those. That's fantastic. That, uh, Ron Leary Jr. absolutely knocked it out of the park. If you guys go back to our channel, we actually did an interview with him Friday mm -hmm. night before the New Hampshire Comic Con uh, or the New Hampshire Comic Show that we all went to, uh, old school comic show. And he was, we were in the hotel lobby. They gave us a place to set up our thing. They gave us power. They gave us internet. They really hooked us up. And that's where you would mention the interview with uh, Jim Shooter. With Jim Shooter, we also interviewed Ron Larry Jr. and he showed us a bunch of commissions that huh. he was working on. Was, yeah, he was a great guy too. Now the channel you're talking about is that Three Men in a Basement. Three Men in a Basement. Man. Is that possibly the link that we have below that everybody I, should subscribe? I believe to? it is. Yeah, yeah. It looks I just like that. That easy. If you want great content, <laughs> subscribe. Do it. 
But moving on, some more great content is your guys' fresh get. And I mean, like, guys, sometimes life isn't fair, right? We all hear that. You know, so a lot of us have kids, and we have to teach that lesson. And, you know, Azores Tiger from Spine Ticks, a.k.a. Eric, it just he just honestly, each and every week, guys, it's not fair for the rest of you. It really isn't fair for the rest of you. And as he says, first off, who doesn't love a good date stamp? As you can see that, he's got the there's a date stamp on the X. He's into that. I'm addicted to finding nice copies of older books with date stamps on them now. Got tagged by the fam, PJ Moore, 72, and Moonlit Comics. Michelle, you got a shout out. FaceTime Comics for First Appearance Friday. So my late post for this one, I'm going with X-Men 28. First appearance of Banshee, father of Siren, and cousin of Black Tom Cassidy. He tagged that as fresh from the comic shop. Eric, again, you crush it each and every week. We should never doubt you, and I don't think we do. Uh, Toys and Blasters with Amazing Spider-Man number 31. That classic cover, if this be my destiny. Just outstanding cover. Uh, we got, by the way, I'm just prefacing this right now. Cover Junkie Comics, he loves his Dr. Doom covers. And this one is no different. <clears throat> fresh from the comic shop, another Doom cover. What if Secret Wars number one? Always, each and every week, we are happy to see Cover Junkies Doom covers. Most of the time. He doesn't do it each and every week, but uh, most of the time. Macross Plus Comics. Uh, fresh from the comic shop. Uh, two copies of Ghost Rider 31. Dr. Voodoo, The Origin of Jericho Drum. Dr. Voodoo, Avenger of the Supernatural. Number one. That is some fresh gets right there. Uh, we also have Dave Collects. Yeah, yeah. He's got a YouTube channel as well. Check him out down below. He has his link there. Uh, but this is honestly, Riri's gonna blow up, guys. She is next. Kamala's coming. Riri's next. Get on it right now. I like this one right here. Third appearance of Riri Williams, aka Ironheart, found it at the local comic shop over the weekend and couldn't pass up for cover price. And AI Tony Stark can't go wrong. The infamous Iron Man is blowing up. Why not? Why not, people? All right, last one before we get to Chris. Roger, he's keeping track, guys. Roger is keeping track. He will announce his winner tonight. All right, this is Mary EC3. Oh, happy day. I have to say thanks to J2 Amir 3Z. That's a Instagram handle. And the low grade guys for putting this prize up for Spine Ticks 750 subscriber giveaway. Guys, as always, Sith Lordly, this is your Spine Ticks winner showing off at Fresh from the Comic Shop. I love the synergy. I'm happy to be the new owner of this beautiful copy of Amazing Spider Man number 362, second appearance of Carnage. Thanks to all who were involved in that hilarious seven-hour-long show. <laughs> Sith Lordly, the Butcher, <laughs> Matt Ford, the Comic Forge, three men in a basement gets a shout-out as well, and all else involved. Too many to remember. God, they put on a hell of a show, those guys. All right, Chris, your, your second fresh get of the week. What do you, oh, that's not Raj. That, that is that Chris. That is Raj, actually. That's, that's that was Raj. Raj. But we, got, we want Chris. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. I got a book. I got a book. Um, I said I would like to have this character's first appearance, but it's going to be out of my price range. So I always talk about the next best things, second appearances, cameos, you know, that type of thing. So I went with the second appearance of this character. Uh, I think this character is going to pop again. I, I think we're going to see this character in the MCU uh, for real. <laughs> and that's tells us tells the suspense 54, the second appearance of the Mandarin. I think we're gonna see the real Mandarin in the MCU that's sometime sure. in the near future. No, it's gonna happen. It's for sure. It's definitely gonna happen. And I'm sorry. I, I got called out for, for pronouncing it wrong, and I can't remember how to pronounce it. Shang-Chi, 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 I you know. Uh you know yeah. what? Can I speak to that? Go for you it. Know, Quite honestly, depending on and if there is any people that are from this culture, I apologize. But to my understanding, because I've done research about this, the word Shang or Shang is actually pronounced differently depending on what region you're from. Mm, okay. Because they and they speak multiple different languages and some of the words are very similar. So um, if you pronounce it Shang, I don't think you're technically wrong depending on what the uh pronunciate the cultural pronunciation for the character actually was whenever they created it i mean yeah honestly it's caught either way though it's he, that, that character's coming yep. uh so all right we're moving on to go ahead uh, sorry i was muted 
If you're being ripped for the way you pronounce that, people are overthinking it. I think so too. And honestly, <laughs> people, you know, <laughs> I like how Voice and Jack says it's pronounced Shang Chi. That's not That's phonetically true. spelled, but I, I, yeah. Anyways, I just want to be respectful. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm acknowledging that maybe it, it could be offensive to people. Somebody yeah. pronounces something. There's a, definitely a possibility we will say pronounce something wrong if it's in a language that we don't speak. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm not the only one. Sith Lordly too. He says Shang, like Bang. Uh, all right. Anyways, <laughs> we're not going to get into this right now. Uh, well, here we here we go with more your fresh gets. Rogers keeping track. Here we got best core. Uh, one did a did nice. He says, nice. FYI, price tags are more than fifty percent on all these books. I see a lot of GI Joes, guys. GI Joe feels like it's under the radar, even though the books are quite expensive. But you got Snake Eyes next coming out next month. Next month, uh, you got that Marvel Comics presents number seventy two. That book, God, I wonder what that's fifty percent off of. Uh, because you if you probably made out well. Some nice um, Bronze X Men there as well. Uh, let's see copper Batman looking good, man. That best core one that is that's a great pickup right there. Thanks for sending those in, guys. Here's what I love I, we started seeing this recently showing your face, raw dog comics, man. Fresh from the comic shop, I'm a huge alien fan. And this is by far my favorite cover. Keep doing it right. We love your show. We love that you watch our show, raw dog mm -hmm. comics, and participate in Fresh from the Comic. And that is comic shop, and that is a beautiful alien's cover. Uh, get really that appreciate a, get that. that guy a lamp or something, you know? What's that? Get that guy a lamp. He does. Yeah, honestly, your lighting <laughs> could be approved, but maybe he's going dark and moody, Roger. Oh, it could oh, be. It's yeah. an aliens book. I, I apologize, no. Raw Dog Comics. Who am I to critique <laughs> your artistic integrity? Freaking I completely Martin apologize Sassy over here. For so God. sorry. I hey, apologize. Jesus. I'm anyways, sorry about that. <laughs> Huey Plata. Here's my fresh from the comic shop. Uh, uh, here's something. Got, uh, I'm, I'm allowing it this time, but. I'm calling it out. Fresh from the comic shop. Um, not super fresh, though. I actually bought this when it came out. That's not fresh from the comic shop, but it's a great-looking cover, so we applaud that, but I'm not doing this again. If you if, if you said, oh, I got this months ago, but I want it for fresh from the comic shop, guys, it's got to be recent. You're, you're selling yourself out right there. Uh, I love this name, by the way. E. Marvell. Such a great name. Uh, <laughs> Batman the Adventures continue number five. Ooh. As he says... One of the best and most underrated runs in comics right now. Chapter one directly ties into the world's finest crossover. Was a good move. This immediately allows Deanie and Burnett to play with this time period before Justice League is only Batman and Superman know each other. So that is some fun, fun stuff. In Marvel, you always crush it each and every week, and we really thank you for participating as well. We could not do this, guys, without you guys sending these fresh gets in. You guys crushed it this week. Uh, maybe it's because we're giving away a slab, but it's fun anyways. Yeah, slab sure. sponsored by Whatnot. Check out the app, guys. We're going to go through that one more time, how you can win a 9.8 slab next week again. Uh, all right, Vinny Whitlock, each and every week. He's up there with Azorius Tiger. Fantastic Four, number 25. Uh, oh. he, th he thinks it's a 3.0. What a mail call today. Great price and shipping from Canada. Another can it's another yeah. time to Canada. Love it. I'm, extremely excited. Wow. I'm extremely excited and happy to have this book still in this Believe, great pickup, I, man. I do believe. I do believe that's the the second Silver Age appearance of Captain America. Oh, get at that! Wow. Okay, confirm that in the chat, people, please. Good friend Dan De La Torre. Honestly, he brings the heat as well. He's up there. Look at this, guys. Last week it was Strange Tales one hundred nine. This oh. week it is Strange Tales. 110 first appearance of dr strange on this week's fresh from the comic shop it's cool to have the first appearance of a founding member of the defenders and as we all know dan de la torre loves his defenders no doubt all right voice inject they sent in avengers terminatrix objective number one really appreciate that all right roger your third fresh get of the week what do you I'm, got how many more how many more books do you have to show off I have like, none. I'm like, I'm, no, I'm talking oh. about th that entered the contest. We told you, uh, we're looking at about 15 to 20. <laughs> we're getting okay. through them. All right. So my third book, I got two days ago in the mail. Um, I'm pretty stoked about it. Not only because he's coming, but I don't own a lot of silver age stuff. It's not, it's not my, uh, my wheelhouse of collecting. Um, so I'm pretty excited to have that. Oh, oh, oh. You would be a contender. You wow. would be a contender if you were eligible, but you are yeah. a judge. I guess you could pick yourself. Nice. You get a lot of heat for that. Yeah. Wow. Look at that guy. Oh yeah. my gosh. I mean, it's what, lower what? grade. It's probably a three. 
two and a okay. half, three, something like that. Um, got some tape on it stuff, but uh, I will be sending this out shortly with a couple other books that I have to get graded and, and put in a minty fresh slab. That is honestly, Rob. Very happy to have that. Congratulations. That's an amazing, that's a great pickup. Such a classic book, even before all the news of Kang coming to the MCU. Uh, yeah. I, super happy that you, you got that book. That's fantastic. Uh, all right, moving on to more fantastic books as well. We got Comic Noob with Astonishing Ant-Man 110, or I'm sorry, Astonishing Ant-Man 10. I still got 110 on the mind from Dan De La Torre. Uh, Jenny Frizen, uh, Barry, couldn't pass on the price, as Comic Noob said. That is a beautiful looking cover. Thank you for sending that in. Uh, we got Green Lantern Comic Collector. Uh, as you can see, he loves his Green Lantern. Uh, but that is a smorgasbord of DC books right there. And the pick is a little bit too small for me to make most of them out. But all oh, fresh gets, as we can see from that picture. Matt Stampa, more fresh gets here. Uh, by the, oh, no, you know what? My bad. We're going to go back to Green Lantern because he had some uh, – pick these up from my poll, except Green Lantern 35 via mail. Thanks to A1 in – A1, Chris, in Roseville. Uh, RWBY, number one, and Variant 2. Justice League 61 with Variant and Variant 62. Green Lantern 3, Variant Silver Age, Green Lantern 35. First appearance of the Aerialist and my favorite crime syndicate for Variant with John Stewart. Good stuff. All right, Matt Stampa, here's this week's Fresh from the Comic Shop. That's the finish of my Gleason collection just because it's so iconic. So a 9.8 in Amazing Spider-Man 55, and thanks to journals for making me remember my childhood. Those are Uncanny X-Men 244, 256, 282, 283, all on newsstand. Of course, I have to throw in some silk with that trade, and that's a lot of stuff going on. Good yeah. stuff, though, Matt Stampa. <laughs> uh, I don't know why Chris is in back. Chris is hiding from us. Uh, all right, Spider-Web. Today's mail call, daughter's birthday gift. I, I mean, what? I don't know what version this is, but it's awesome. <laughs> is what it is. It is awesome. Uh, good friend Union Josh Comics. Amazing Spider-Man 315. First cover appearance and second full appearance of Venom. I was so stoked to find this in the back as she'd been, and apparently it had only been put in the box the day before. Uh, so shout out to my local comic shop. That is a, that's a classic McFarland cover, guys. Uh, we got Nerds Being Geeks. I'm liking this right here, guys. Nerds being geeks, Doctor Strange okay. 171, nice. some Silver Age Roy Thomas goodness from 1968, picked up on a Facebook claim sale from my local LCS, Rad Raptor. I like that name for an LCS, guys. I do like that indeed. Um, all right, moving on. We have Sicilian Comics. This is, this is unique, guys. This is absolutely unique. This is Luomo Ragno, number 19. Uh, facts, Italian reprint of Amazing Spider-Man number 23, and it was published in January of 1971, Sicilian Comics, 1998. I love this book. He had a, he had a few other uh, fresh guests that were uh, from Italy, I do believe. Uh, but, man, you always you bring some really unique ones each and every week, and we appreciate that greatly, you participating in that. All right, Chris, you're our last fresh get of the week. It's not going to top Rogers, by the way. but <laughs> Unless he's got a better grade. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. What do you got? Well, uh, it's another book that I got because I'll probably never be able to afford the first appearance. Now, it's not a second appearance, though. It's something else. And it's kind of fun because it's the Golden Age character making their first Silver Age appearance. It's another Tales of Suspense, and it's number 65. Wow. The dude. first Silver Age appearance of Red Skull. Oh, that's a great book, dude. That is a – you always, these Tales of Suspense, I know you're into them big time, and each and every week it just – it fascinates me, the ones that you bring, especially the ones that have this kind of significance with the first Silver Age appearance of the Red Skull. That's awesome, dude. By the way, we also got confirmation that that book, um, it was the second fight between Hulk and Thing, as well as the second appearance of Cap in the Silver Age. So you were right, Chris. Um, all right, moving on, guys. Uh, that is all we got for fresh gets of people on camera. Now we got to get to you guys because we got a decision to make, and this is not going to be easy for Roger. He is he is going to be the first one deciding uh, the winner or the finalist of the finalist. Uh, Right. The finalist of Fresh from the Comic Shop. The finalist. One of two. Chris and I will decide the other one over the weekend. 
All right, we got Tommy Boy Collections. I love this cover. This is a classic cover. Uh, Wolverine Wednesday, another one from when I was a youngster in the 80s. Is that that may be a Frank Miller cover? I'm not sure, but that was during definitely during the time. Um, I love this story too, guys. This is a great story. M Cat 910. Sunday was my birthday, and I went to my local comic shop today to pick up new releases and back issues from Brian at Phil's Comics. And this was at the bottom of my stack of books when I got home. Nice. That is a beautiful story. Props to you, uh, uh, Brian at Phil's Comics. Uh, Brian and Phil's Comics. That's freaking great. I love it. DigiDark Comics. The collection grows. Shout out to Cabalt Comics. And when you visit them, tell them DigiDark Comics sent you. Uh, this is a beautiful Silver Age Batman book. Loving this cover, guys, by the way. Wise Guy Collectibles, the name as well. Uh, rings true. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles nice. exclusive variant. I, Lee, in Hawk Lee, I do believe. That's a really nice looking cover. Um, here's another one, guys. Here is another one. We get to see your beautiful face out of print collectibles. Uh, as he says, sexy. One down, 16 more to go. Uncanny X-Men 12, November 2013. 150 Emma Frost. Uh, Milo Menera, retailer incentive, variant covers. Starting to collect the Milo Menara's variant covers. Just love how he put his own twist on the Marvel characters. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff indeed. Um, Roger, read you loud and clear, buddy. Uh, Neil Floyd, 79, Batman 108 books I got from a blind bundle sale and a nice price from... L. Jim G's Comics Cavalier. Those are all the uh, same issue? They're just variants? All same issue. They're all Batman 108. All variants. I see the Federici one there, and I don't it's know the other ones. But that's a nice pickup, man. Those are some great fresh get. All right, we got Flap Slap Jr. Love the name. After a comic oh, shop run to Doom London, cover. I had to pick this up as I love the cover. Dr. Doom and X-Men, what's not to love? I believe that's John Byrne, too, and I love me some John Byrne. Good stuff, Flap Jack. Flap Slap Jr., uh, we got Gus 420 and X. He's got, uh, the first full appearance of new warriors and introduction to score girl. That Thor is Ron friends. Again, loving me some Ron friends, geek stock collectibles. And he's a Yinzer, by the way, he's from Pittsburgh and he said he's a Yinzer three great covers from fresh from the comic shop. Loving the Joker series. And this might be my favorite cover yet. Picked up my son's favorite for him. The miles one, since he's hunting the run with cover by one of the favorite artists in Hyuk Lee. And rarely grab a random issue just for the cover, but love this Black Panther Gleason yeah, cover, iconic. Black Black I love that Black one. Too. I have that yeah. one coming in the mail for me. Disney Family Collectibles, Haunted Mansion number seven, Slave oh. Labor, one of our absolute favorite rides at Disney. This one is staying in the PC. I love that. And honestly, I love the Haunted Mansion as well. Yeah, the ghosts is. are awesome. Awesome. Love it. All right. Way, mm -hmm. Ways Comics, X-Men number one. Look at that. Classic. I have to say that's classic. Yeah. <laughs> um, we got pop culture addiction. X Men one twenty nine. Happy to grab a mid grade first appearance of Kitty Pride and Emma Frost. Can't remember who tried to grab who grabbed her second appearance, but there's the first. Uh, we got Wands Ready eighty eight. New arrival. The yes. man called Nova number one. Great character that could be explored a number of ways in live action, and it will be. We yeah. have Feige said he he said Novas are coming is basically what he said. Uh, so that's that's confirmation, Chris. If, if if I'm correct, am I right? <laughs> yep. uh, Specs.men. That feeling you get when you when the random late night CGC auction ending Sooner Search purchase from a month ago hits. I saw it as a Kirkman title with a super provocative cover. Figured it was worth a gamble for less than grading cost. Also, whatnot comics, whatnot approve me as a live seller, please. See if we can get <laughs> them for you. But that that book is rising, rising, rising. No doubt about that. All right, almost done here. AZ Mailman, my submission for Fresh from the Comic Shop this week. The first three releases of Hellfire Gala connecting cover set and an idea I'm liking more than I thought I would. Uh, those are some nice looking covers. Absolutely. Yeah. Love it. Looks like they're on a step and repeat of some sort. Really cool. And the last one, good friend Ian from Team Nerd Herd. Hood Rat Comics, my bouquet of new comic book day. Oh, that that. Nice Books for the Fresh from the Comic Shop for the homies over at Comic Book Canon. Their show is every Friday. Make sure to check it out. And you guys need to check out Team Nerd Herd. Their link is down below. I see your promise me darkness, the nice house on the lake, firepower, loving firepower. You got that uh the the Star Wars um Boba Fett variant. And I don't know what the other two are, but that is that is great. And that right there, guys, concludes fresh from the comic shop. We're gonna give Roger some time to decide. 
who one of the finalists is. This is going to take some deciding. But before we do that, guys, we are so, so happy to bring back Tom Tormey and the Cosmic Minute to learn about a variety of ages of your heroes that you love. Check it out. Here's the Comic Minute. How old are your favorite comic book characters? There's a good chance they're older than you think. Hi, I'm Tom from Cosmic Comic History, and today we're talking about the real ages of five of your favorite fictional characters. DC's Bart Allen, aka Impulse, ages at increased hyperspeed due to his incredible metabolism. That means by the time Bart was two years old, he already looked like he was 12. He managed to slow down his aging, and he now matures at a normal rate, at least physically. Although the MCU's version of Natasha Romanoff was born in 1984, making her about 37 years old, her Marvel Comics counterpart is a tad older. Her exact age still remains a mystery. We do know that Natasha fought alongside Captain America in World War II in her early teens. That would put her in her mid to late 80s. Thor is famously played by Chris Hemsworth in the MCU. Hemsworth himself is around 37 years old. Thor, however, is around 1,500 years old. That actually makes him the Asgardian equivalent of a teenager. E.L. O'Brien is DC's Plastic Man, and at the end of 2002's time-traveling Justice League storyline, The Obsidian Age, it was thought that Plastic Man was dead. Although he was left as nothing more than crumbs on the ocean floor, Plast spent the next few millennia piecing himself back together. That means that Plastic Man is around 3,000 years old. Norrin Rad, a.k.a. the Silver Surfer, is usually depicted somewhere in his 20s or 30s. However, in 2017 Silver Surfer issue 14, Norrin travels back in time 13.7 billion years, and he just kind of hangs out and waits for the present time to occur, making him billions of years old. And I'm still Tom from Cosmic Comic History, and that was your Cosmic Minute. Until next time, be well and stay safe. All right, now while Roger is tabulating all the results, I do want to say I am so happy to have Tom Tormey back, Chris. I am so happy. Like, he could be talking about a steaming pile of shit in the history of that, and I would just listen intently and just be happy to see his smiling face. Uh, I agree. Absolutely. That was, that was not a steaming pile of shit because it was absolutely fascinating to know the ages of the heroes that we know and love. Uh, you know, it's something that you don't really think about much, and a lot of the times you, you're growing up reading about these these uh, amazing characters and it's like you always assume that they're older than you and I guess a lot of us are now in the age where it's like oh shit I'm older than these characters that I thought used to be older but here's Roger uh by the way Tom Tormey thank you again thank you so much for being back being healthy cannot wait for your cosmic comic history you guys follow him I do believe I have I have his maybe not follow at cosmic comic history on Instagram normally I have that it's been a while since he's been on the show Again, he always adds so much to the show, and we're very grateful he's a part of the show. Now, Roger, before you get to any sort of decision, I'm not sure where your head's at. Chris and I are going to go through the rules one more time Okay. on how to win a 9.8. So, you know, I have it down to five. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to remove you, and Chris and I are going to go through the rules, and you're going to come back and give us one. Okay. Here we go. Chris, just take the lead on this. I did the lead last time. Go for it. What do we got? How, how can people enter – to win a 9.8 slab on Fresh from the Comic Shop. All right, guys. So, again, to make it clear, you all can still enter books for Fresh from the Comic Shop like you normally have been and not have a chance to win. But who wants to do that when you only need to do a few simple things in order to have that chance to win a 9.8 slab? So this is what I recommend you doing first. First, you've got to download the What Not app. Use our link below. Click that link, download the app. Once you download the app, it's really easy to create your own account. Once you have your account up and running, you got to find us on Whatnot, Comic Book Canon, and follow us. Boom. That, once you do that, it's the same thing that you do every week to submit your books. Remember, though, we're going to be picking based on three criteria. Presentation. Make sure you have good lighting. Maybe you want to add, you know, a little toy that works with the comic book or something like that. Get your face in it. Smile. We love smiles. Cover. Is it a, a pretty cover or an awesome cover or an action cover? And then uniqueness. Again, it's all subjective. You take your picture of your book. You upload it to Instagram. You don't private message us. 
You don't share it in a story. You upload it to Instagram and post it with the hashtag FFTCS. And you also want to at us, comic book canon, and you're all good. That's what you need to do. I couldn't explain it better myself. Um, I am having some problems here. <laughs> uh, I'm a little, I'm a little flower. I, I owe apologies here, guys. We, we get so many books in here. We get so many books in here. And X11 Bravo, I am so sorry. You did post. I have no idea why. I, <laughs> we may have missed this one. My apologies. DM us. We'll see. We'll get Come full stick. screen. What do we got there? Come full screen. Take me out. So we can see. No, take me out. Take All me right. out. I'm a little, yeah. again, I'm messing up left and right. There here. you go. This is uh, Ooh, X11 close. Bravo with, with the, the, the Semper Fies, the eight, classic 80 Marvel books right there. Uh, wow. And that's a crazy haul. So I don't know why we missed that one. Uh, X11 Bravo. I just liked it. There was another one. I think Heroes Reborn. We missed yours. We were getting so many submissions in, and it's just Chris and I. It's really hard to keep up with it. So, again, this may happen every once in a while. Hit us up with the DMs. We'll talk it through. It was not intentional by any means. We apologize. All right, let's bring Roger back in. One more thing, Jeff. One more thing I want to let folks know. Guys, don't go rushing to get your submissions in on Friday. You want to make sure – if you want to get submitted for this week, I would recommend having your submissions in by Wednesday, all right? Yeah. Thursday, maybe. Now, this is, this is what I recommend. Now, if you don't make it to this show – and you happen to send a submission in maybe late Thursday or Friday, day of, we might not get to it this show, but if we don't, we'll grab it for the next week. So just keep that in mind. All right, I'm looking up Heroes Reborn. Comments here. The account is private, so maybe that's why. We're following you back. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's a good. That could be That could be why. You, you're, yep. you have a private account, and I don't think other people yep. can see that. Just followed you back though, but anyways, all right, you are doing it right, X11 Bravo. Uh, Heroes were born. Let's just hit us up. All right, Roger, this is the this is one of the finalists. Chris and I are going to decide on the second finalist over the weekend. Roger, not an easy task. You got this. This was an amazing collection of books. It is. It was a lot of good books. I had it whittled down to five, um, which didn't make it any easier on me. I think. Um, and by the way, the Canadians just won game two. In Winnipeg, they took the first two away. Let's go, Habs, boy! I, dude, what, honestly, what year this would be. You're taking time away from watching the Habs play and spending it with us. Well, I had it on the iPad. You know, don't, oh. don't get me wrong. <laughs> That's what I do with the Sixers too. So. Flyers are happy, but anyway, uh, there we go. Uh, so I am going to have to go with Sicilian Comics. Woo. That Italian variant of ASM. Good choice. I'm bringing it up right years. now. Good choice. That is just amazing. Look at the cover. Look at the goblin. Just um, you know, I, just amazing. And it's rare. It's definitely unique. Yep. Um, I love that cover. And you know, he hit me on a night where I was showing my Italian variant. So yep. There you go. Honestly, awesome. it's all subjective, but I, I 100. This one really stuck out for me as well. I it's, I think it's like a, definitely a special comic book. Congratulations, yeah. Sicilian Comics. You're moving on to the final round. You will be going head to head with one other finalist that Chris and I will decide by the end of this weekend and post on Monday on our stories. And then there's 24 hours for you, the audience, to vote who's going to win the 9.8 slab. We'll know by Tuesday. Roger, thank you for that task right there. Yeah. Definitely not easy. Um, oh, and no. we greatly oh. appreciate you doing that work for us. But now, Chris has a lot of work to do. That's right. Because right now, right now, we do a little thing. Oh, and by the way, this is one of our favorite segments, even though Fresh from the Comic Shop is. The all-time favorite. But this is the top 10 hottest comics of the week based off of cover prices data. That is right. We are talking data. Cover price releases a top 10 hottest comics of the week on a Monday. Our show is live on Friday. What we like to do is look at this as a stock index or, or what have you. Uh, look at all these the, the top 10 books. And then Chris takes the three most interesting books off of that list each week and dissects them. Breaks it down and tells you why they're interesting and what he thinks overall about them so before we get into chris's three picks of the week we're going to get into the top 10 hottest comics of the week and obviously we we want roger's opinion as well he's a very opinion opinionated person and we'd like to hear what he has <laughs> to say top 10 hottest comics of the week are here we go we at number 10 we have x-men 53 the first appearance of onslaught 
man, I, I read why this book is hot and now I can't even remember, Raj. I don't know if you remember, but uh, it is, uh, oh, Onslaught's coming back, I believe in some way, shape or form in a, a current storyline. So people are specking on this book. At number nine, we have Marvel Comics Presents 117, the first Wolverine versus Venom. Uh, pretty sweet Sam Keith cover as well. At number eight, it's Hardcore number one, the second print. Uh, but we saw, I cannot remember who had that 9.8 Hardcore, great timing, um, from Fresh from the Comic Shop. Number seven, Infamous Iron Man number one. First two was Iron Man and the first Tony Stark AI. I'm sorry, I had a burp there. At number six, we have Captain America number 16, the first Cynthia Schmidt as Sin, Red Skull's daughter. At number five, we have Bitterroot number 13, Sanford Green, Beat Street variant. Bitterroot, a lot of a lot of great things going on with that as well. And number four, we have Seasons Beating, the Margo, J J J I can never pronounce his last name, but he's got, he's a great artist, his variant. Uh, there's a lot of going on with this, and there's not much content other than it's a cool cover, not much content in the guts of the book. Uh, number three is Witches, number one. Number two is Superman 10 Scent Adventure, the first appearance of a different version of Supergirl, CRL, which a lot of people are specking that she will be the that version of Supergirl in the Flash. And at number one, we have the regular ver the, the cover A hardcore number one. Quite an interesting list this week, Chris. I'm okay. sure you're gonna get into a lot of things as to why. Raj, what do you think about this list, this top ten list? I don't recognize it for nothing, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean there's there's definitely a lot of books like these are out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean we, like what 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 makes a book like witches all of a sudden be in the top ten again? I'll right? tell you I'll this is why options. Scott's no Scott Snyder tweeted that he's done with the script for witches, but uh, nobody's yep. no, we don't know where it is in the in the process of development. We don't even know if it's picked up. I mean, maybe there's something out there years ago that they picked up. And this hardcore, you know, like what is this hardcore? Hardcore thing? is option. that's picked up. Uh, that's a that's a Skybound book, a Robert Kirkman book that I do so, believe is optioned. Yes. So these no names yep. are just because they've been optioned. And people are jumping yeah, on yep. them before they blow up too much. Exactly. Iron Man, uh, the infamous Iron Man, is hot because of the Tony Stark AI. Because everybody's assuming that Robert Downey Jr. will come back for right, the that one uh, I do. Iron Heart show. Um, I mean, but Wolverine versus Venom, 117. Uh, Marvel Comics with I don't know onslaught I don't I don't really know anyways but Chris knows Chris yeah, knows Chris a knows. lot <laughs> Chris get into it and we're me and me and Roger yeah are you know your, I, your theory, not on your theories but on why people are just running out rushing out to get this stuff go for right. it right I, I do want to say you know I I personally have stayed away I always give a big shout out to independent books Jeff we've been doing this for over a year now we know that if there's any type of talk about something being optioned with any type of independent book. It's, it's most likely going to show up on this list. So kudos to that. But for me, it's kind of taking me away from picking those type of books because it's just, it's, it's almost redundant. Real quick. But, I do want to address one thing that Doug Bratton says, Hey Raj, hashtag three men in the basement. But up, Dan brings up a quick question. I want to reiterate this. How do you base this top 10? We don't. It's cover price yep. basis off of sales data, off of mm -hmm. eBay, yep. Mercari, uh, what a, other a variety of other shop. Prices, I'm not sure, but there it's data on sales, yep. and th this data is is not accurate too. It's skewed because somebody could be paying fifty dollars for you know some fifty cent book out of nowhere, and all of a sudden that book is hot because it's rose the, the price is right, you know. So it's not a perfect system, but it's the and Chris and I opinion it's a, a, the, one of the best ways to track how hot books are is with this top ten list and these yep. these. These sales, so that's that answer the question. Wanted to get yeah. that out. absolutely, and, and and it shows it shows you guys how we as a as a market as consumers on the market react to things, right? Um, we're I, we're never going to get away to where we track the actual sales of books. Why? Because nobody's tracking actual LCS stores for mm -hmm. one, right? So you know you're never going to have an accurate top ten list when it comes to actual sales data, but you have enough here to where we can look at how we're reacting on the market. And uh, yeah, so so looking at my top three picks today, again, I try to go with different things that are interesting to me. All right, so my number three uh, pick on the list was X-Men number 53, the first uh, full appearance of Onslaught. This is uh, a really uh, fun pick for me because Onslaught recently reappeared in Way of X number two. All right, now, before I talk about the book, let's look at the numbers. 130% increase in sales, with a CGC high 9.8, $265. Decent money for a 90s book, mid-90s. Uh, this is a book that made it to the top list. 
because of the comic books, right? The character showed up in a new X-Men book. Everyone's rushing back to say, ooh, Onslaught. Who? Maybe it's a new character saying, who is this Onslaught? I want to get the first appearance. Maybe it's older collectors like us that are like, oh, man, I remember collecting Onslaught in the 90s. I'm seeing him in Way of X. I'm going to go back and grab that first appearance. It's always exciting to me when books get hot because they're specific to what's going on currently in the comic books. And look, it's, you know, call it speculation, call it this and that, but it shows that people at least have their eyes and ears and head to what's going on in comic books right now. And it's not just about what's being optioned, what's going on in the movies and so forth. There's a lot of different collectors in this hobbies in it for different reasons. And we're looking at different factors and uh that's why i had to talk about this book because i think it's absolutely cool i love no, I like it i love it when a book is hot because of another comic yep it's one thing when it's option that's people who don't know comics jumping on something because they saw something on tv or if a movie comes out a new character a new tv show a lot of those sales are from people who don't know anything about comics but they think that they can make money off of that speculation and buying that comic when you have a comic that's hot because that character showed up in another comic, that means people read that book. Yep. I was just about to say that. I'm glad you brought that up. But like uh, that, it shows strength in the market as well when things like this happen. And we're seeing this a lot more frequently than not yeah. because there are a lot of new readers that have come into this hobby uh, in the past, I don't know, over a year because of the pandemic. And it's yeah. really nice to see something like this. So, Raj, 100% on what you said. I'm hoping we disagree on something soon. <laughs> Chris, what we did your, at the beginning of the show, but I, you know, I got, I got to pull up. I, I saw, I saw some stuff about Sony and how you know you'll never trust. Them. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. We can only hope. But Chris, what is your second most interesting pick from this list? All right, uh, all right. Second pick. Uh, keeping it Marvel. Keeping it Marvel here. Captain America, number sixteen. And uh, man, is this volume six? I. It's hard to to keep track of which volumes it is. Um, but uh, this is the first appearance of Cynthia uh, Schmidt, the daughter of um, uh, Red Skull, uh, as Sin. Now, this book has been getting hot because, and, and you know what, I, I, I had a rough week and I meant to do some research on this, but there's speculation that she could be the villain in Captain America 4. Now, where that speculation's coming from, I have no idea. Uh, there's nothing that's been confirmed at all. We know almost nothing about uh, Captain America 4, except for who's going to be uh, directing and writing it. And, of course, that Anthony Mackie is the new cap, right? But check this out. 441% increase in sales. And a CGC 9.8, 6.0. Hundred dollars. Jeez. Wow. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I'm all about speculation. Um, I will not say that I'm disagreeing with Roger because Roger did bring up a good point on the last book um, about sometimes it's people that you know just see something on the TV show. I won't sit and say you know Roger. I I, I like to look at it as a a broader perspective of things. I can't just sit and say that it's people not wanting to that don't read comics or just want to make money. Um, I see it is the fact that people are just in tune to speculation. So in my opinion, what makes these books hot when there's speculation is that everyone jumps on it. The readers, the collectors, the people right. that want to invest, the people that want to speculate and flip. But once you get to a certain number too, um, the speculators kind of fall off because there's almost no wiggle room for them to make any money. So when a book like this hits a 9.8 and it's a $600 sell, you're like, man, somebody that wanted that book paid $600 mm -hmm. for it. It's absolutely yeah. crazy. Um, and I'm all for speculation, but it just go it goes to show. And you can look at all the variables and you can take it or leave it. But people are putting money in comic books. This is a uh, a modern book that I mean six hundred dollars for an iPhone eight. That's madness just on some speculation. It's crazy. That's the market. Yep, that's the market these days, and we're seeing crazy, crazy like 
you know, crazy prices going here that you never would have imagined. And I don't know, it's kind of exciting. Raj, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, even for books that just a year ago were were peanuts. Mm -hmm. You know, look at the price of a uh, X Men. Uh, of course, I'm going to forget the number of First Bishop. Mm -hmm. buy, I, yeah, they're, they go for like five, six hundred dollars right now. Nine point yeah, eight. A year ago, you could have bought that for less than a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, absolutely. and it's it's how about Spawn number one? Those are throwaway books a year or two ago. You know, now they're same thing. Four, five, six hundred dollars. People are paying for these things. It's and incredible. It's so dude, this market's so unpredictable. We'll see what starts happening when when people are able to spend their money elsewhere. When when things start opening up with the pandemic, so. We'll see. A lot of people think that a bubble's going to burst. A lot of people think that this is going to continue on. Well, the Who thing knows? Is there are books that people want because it's the drop off from a nine point eight to a nine point six on these books is incredible. So mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it's someone saying, you know, I want the first appearance of Bishop, but if I'm going to pay for it, I, I want a nine eight. Yeah. yeah, and that's another thing to really that that you know I've talked about this before. There's a market for nine point eights right now, and it's yeah. booming. And everyone's you know you look at like we got. 90s books, modern books. Oh, print run, print run. No, no, no. Look at the census and look at how small of a number there are of 9.8 books on the census. Like this book right here. I guarantee you that the demand is extremely exceeding the supply of these books in 9.8. Hey, plus it's a, a nice fully white cover. Probably yeah. a bit harder to find in, in 9.8. You got to keep in mind the, the 9.8 market is a market in and of itself and people yeah. are willing to pay that money. And what's the basic supply and demand when demand exceeds supply, especially at this type of rate, that price is going to continue to go up because people are going to be willing to say, there's only a few out there. I want it. What do I need to pay to get it? Yeah, I agree. It's the 9.8 thing is, is real right now. Mm -hmm. You look at the Amazing Spider-Man 252, a 9.8, you know, up almost three grand at this point. A 9.6 is like 600 bucks, 900 bucks or something like that. That's crazy. You know, people crazy. are going to pay good money for a book. They want a 9.8. Yeah, that's a crazy disparity. By the way, this goes along what we were talking about before. Miguel uh, Grasa, Marvel does seem to release new content on comics based on future movie content. That's so true because Kevin Feige runs the comic book. I mean, he's head of, of that whole division, so he's overseeing that. I don't know when he has time in the day to, to get into the nitty gritty, <laughs> but I'm sure he's like, Hey, down there, push this character, please yeah. have them, give them their own series. So keep an yeah. eye on that guys. Definitely yep. keep an eye on, on what characters Marvel is pushing because it's likely you, you may see them on the big screen. All right, Chris, this has been fascinating, but this is it right here. Your last book. Oh, all right. The week, the most interesting pick off of this list. What do you Yeah. Got? Yeah. Very, Ooh. very interesting. Uh, let me get some water in. Okay, uh, get it in. This is uh picked a DC book. Woo, DC? Uh, what yeah, show I, is I, this? I know we haven't had a DC book in, in a while. <laughs> Are you sure this is comic book canon? All right. All right, yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah. We're sure. We're here. We're here. It's us. <laughs> All right, my number one pick. Superman 10 Cent Adventures number one. <laughs> All right. Cool cover. Cool cover. I like that cover there. Here it is with this book, guys. This is the first appearance of the version of Supergirl known as uh, Sorel. Uh, it is uh, 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 official that she has been cast for the CW Supply Show. Uh, the actress has been uh, cast as well. Now, this book came out in 2003. All right? It's a modern book. Look at what this book did this last week. 487% increase in sales. That's probably because nobody was buying it <laughs> before this week. <laughs> um, and a high raw sold for 25 bucks. I mean, not 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 an extreme amount of money. Um, obviously, you know, this book, it goes, there, there's no like CGCs on the market being sold or anything like that because probably, you know, a, a week ago, nobody was sending this book off to CGC or CBCS. <laughs> Here's my thing and, and why I picked this. And, and you guys know, I pick stuff because it's interesting, not because, oh, it's the hottest book and you need to go out and buy it, right? I think it's very interesting because, one, guess what? A CW show brought this book up. And I don't know about you guys, but between me and you, as someone who 
loved the first couple of seasons of Arrow, as somebody who loved the first couple of seasons of The Flash, the CW DC, DC shows have gotten so horribly bad that, I mean, I still try to watch them, but I it's just, it's hard. I can't even pay attention to them. So it's, it's really interesting that this book still gains steam. So, you know, kind of going back to, you know, the points that Roger brought up about the first, first book, let's kind of play hypotheticals here on this one. What is driving the popularity of these books, of this book? Are people actually watching CW shows and they want to, you know, be interested about the character in the comic book? Maybe, maybe some people. Um, or are we just keeping our ears to news and we hear casting calls and all this stuff when it comes to all these things? And it's either, you know, this is speculators or it's the investors or the hobbyists that just feel like they have to have the FOMO because there's been an announcement of a casting in a live action. My guess, it's still all of the above. But the thing with this book specifically, and I'm going to make kind of a, a crystal ball prediction on this. I know that that the high raw being sold for $25 isn't that much money. I am going to predict that maybe a couple months from now or after the season of the flash or who knows what happens if the character is going to be around next season. I, I don't know. This book is going to be back in the bargain bins. <laughs> so, you know, it's, uh, it's just one of those things that um, I'm all about. I'm all about the connectiveness of folks that watch the movies and the TV shows and, and want to learn about these characters and go to the comic books. I'm all about the films and the TV shows bringing folks our age that can see these combo book characters that we grew up with on the pages be brought to life on screen. And I'm all about a healthy amount of FOMO when it comes to wanting to spec and getting like, like I do my top tens on my channel, the top 10 Dr. Strange spec books, you know, ones that aren't really on people's radar, you know, maybe the dark holds coming in that Dr. Strange, um, Volume two, number 60, which is like the origin of the, of the dark hold and how it has to do with vampires. We know that vampires are coming in the MCU. We just seen the dark hold in WandaVision. Okay, let's go get a copy. I'm all for that stuff. And then when we see him on screen, I'm, we're like, yes, and look, I got my copy. You know, you show it up. I'm all for it. But this is just one of those situations where I don't think CW in whatever they're doing with their characters on their shows is gonna hold anyway. So that's why I said, we don't do the top 10 because we wanna talk about what's hot for you to be on your app and you know go on eBay and buy everything we're talking about. We're here to talk about why they're interesting. And I'll tell you what, this book is absolutely interesting. Uh, I don't care about it. I don't think I own it and I don't ever care to own it unless maybe it was as the title sent a 10 cent adventure that I would pay 10 cents for. <laughs> That's just me. You're muted. I'm done. <laughs> I'm muted because my dogs are snoring, but I would love Roger's take on this. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that we've seen over the – and I completely agree with the first one to like four seasons of every show WB did. Uh, they were great. The writing was great. And then it was just like second verse, same as the first. Yeah. He had one bad guy for the entire season, mm -hmm. yeah. and the same thing happened over and over. And all of a yep. sudden, like Arrow, all of a sudden everybody's a superhero. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you know, like everybody who puts on a mask is is a is a superhero, and I and I think that mis and I, I think that hurt some of the newer WB shows because I didn't watch Star Girl for that reason. I'm like I'm so sick and tired of Flash. I'm sick and tired of Arrow. I don't know where they're going with this. I watched Supergirl. That got stupid, you know. And but. I think to your point, those characters didn't blow up. They did for they went from a dollar book to a twenty five dollar book. But I think the same thing is said true about the DC movies. I mean, look at look at yeah. look at the first appearance yep. of Doomsday. Yep. I mean, what did it, what was that a fifty dollar book after he showed up in the movie? If you got what like the fifth print or whatever was the hard one to find, and that's a ten dollar book again. Like mm -hmm. 
you know, that's a that's supposed to be a huge character, and they even brought him back in uh, uh, Krypton, the, the the TV show, which uh -huh. I don't know where that is because that's one of my favorite shows to come out in the last that was a know, good show. decade. And I absolutely loved it. And they brought him back there, and it still did nothing. You know, like DC is in general, like yep. for even the first appearance of Dark Side is an affordable <clears throat> book right now. You know, after all the hoopla with the Snyder cut, still an affordable book to get. So I think DC in general. So yep. I agree with you. That book, you know, once whatever happens in the TV show happens, that's going to be a 10 set book again. Look, look, Chris and I talk about this on the regular about DC. There is no strategy. There is no, there's no leadership to instill. Like there's no leadership that can guide the creative to create. They're, yeah. they're meddling. They're contradicting each other. They're making absolutely no you sense because their shows and t everything goes in their own direction. Not only their shows, their movies too. That's what I mean. The movies and the shows, there's Look no what continuity. The executives say yep. they contradict each other. They have they're making no. Chris and I went off on a rant a couple months ago on what Hamada was saying about something that completely contradicted what they said in uh, DC fandom. It's garbage. And I, I'll yeah. be Kamigazi brings up an amazing point. There's no true guidance with DC movie and TV. In my honest opinion. And that's Chris and I talk about this each and every week yeah. that we're we're actually offended at how these characters have been treated, how this universe has yeah. been treated. Because growing up, those are my favorite characters, yes. and they've done nothing in the movies. It's been such a disappointment. Disappointment, and and just I mean, there's been a few decent ones here and there, but it's it's been a majority disappointment and just straight garbage, straight yeah. garbage. Let, let me let me bring in Star Wars as an example of how the live action right and being able to take those type of properties in the connect uh connectivity of it all that marvel's done so successful right look at look at what look at what 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 disney has been doing with star wars now even with the animated stuff and the connectivity matters because we can watch mandalorian and then you know we got ahsoka out of it we know she's coming yeah we know we're getting a um, Obi Wan show, where Obi Wan is obviously connected to the. It's all in the same universe. But even even Clone Wars, even the Bad Batch, these are animated shows that exist within. You know, they're they're telling stories of filling the holes in the same universe that's connected that we love. And Absolutely. when it comes when now and look at the hype around the Star Wars comic books. There's something there when it all can be connected. We get pulled into the characters even more. We get pulled into the universe even more. And it does something to us as comic book fans. And when you when you have a property in a franchise like Star Wars that started in the movies and then went to comic books, yeah. yet we are still having this, this uh, interlocking... A, a connectedness between the comics and the movie universe it speaks to something and dc just cannot do it they and they haven't and honestly at this point at least maybe in our lifetimes i don't know if they ever will and, to, and to, to kind of help jump on that point with star wars so i don't know if you, I'm a, i've become a big star wars guy and uh I've gone back and I've started reading like the novels. I just finished the Thrawn trilogy and oh, nice. and all that stuff. You know, I read the light of the Jedi before I started reading the high Republic books, which actually helps the comics make more sense, even though you don't need it. But the first episode of the bad batch, when I went to work, the first thing we all talked about around the cooler was that they saw Ezra Bridger as a kid. I mean, uh, Kanan, Kanan as a little kid. That was awesome. The way they crossed the two shows instantly and everybody recognized how genius that was that you saw Kanan and you found out why he was all by himself and what, you know, what happened until then. And I watched all the clone wars. I've gone back and watched the last, last season of clone wars three times. Mm. I've watched rebels. You know, I was, I'm a huge uh, Sabine and Ahsoka fan. I cannot wait to see the two of them together in a show. I just had a commission done with the two of them on the cover. But to have that all kind of, and you put the bad batch, and you're like, wow, they just had Kanan on there. That was that's that's amazing. Like I didn't even realize where in the continuity of Star Wars the bad batch was until that first episode when they actually showed Kanan and showed that the bad batch saved him. 
And that's what actually there was their demise as far as being kicked out, like being called traitors or whatever. Sorry, spoiler, if you hadn't seen them. But we are on like episode four or five, so get with it. But you're right. That continuity it was is genius the way they intertwined them. In every show, there's an intertwine between Rebels and Clone Wars and, and the Bad Batch that, that if you saw those, you're like, holy crap, I remember when that happened in the other show. They're using these kind of tools uh, in their back pocket to kind of not only inform you as like, hey, here's the timeline, by the way, but do it in a creative way that entertains you. That's like, shit, there's there's Kanan, right? That's It's, it's incredible. And that's why I like the connectivity. I, I, I truly enjoy it. And I know, I know, bottom tier collector. I think he's AK. He used to be the bearded one. Uh, not everything needs to be turned into a movie franchise. There's beauty in things that stand alone, like Nolan Batman. We don't need a connected universe for DC movies to be good. I, I, you, you, it doesn't need to happen to be good, but it is. They need to make that, a good movie. Yeah, yeah but we're all hey. comic book, yeah, they need a good movie to start with. But <laughs> right, we're all comic book fans here. We grew yep. up with these connected universes, with these characters just yep. literally jumping from title to title. That's something yep. that again we take for granted with the MCU. How hard this is to do. What Kevin yep. Feige and all of the creatives have done there with the log- I say this every week with the logistics of production. Not only, not only hiring actors that have the availability to be able to interconnect it and sign on to these films, but getting the producers, the writers, all of the creatives intertwined together to create this plan has never been done before, and it's not easy. And DC just assumed that these characters are so lovable, every, anybody will come and, and check this shit out, right? So let's yeah, just yeah. try and create a connected universe. Wet, wet toilet paper, throw it against the wall. And see oh, my goodness. Thing. They didn't know how hard it really was, and the proof is in the pudding. To bottom tier's point here, though, uh, he's it's it. Th- there's a reason about what I'm talking about, though. I agree 100% with your statement, bottom tier. Um, you don't need a connected universe to make a good Batman movie. You don't need a connected universe to make a good Spider-Man movie. You don't need a connected universe to make a good Captain America movie, and so forth. But the reason that comic book lovers are going back to comic books as much as they are for these characters is directly correlated to the Mm -hmm. success of a successful connected universe. That's my point. So look at, look at the, the Nolan trilogy. What did that do? What did that do? And I know, you know, say for example, the Nolan trilogy came out post um, MCU right which which it it, it it did I mean at least one of the films um and then one of them came out right when it was getting started but if it got started like after we were some years deep into the MCU maybe there would have been a different impact because we already saw how the MCU um uh, uh, was impacting collectors to get back to the books but Raz al Ghul's first appearance didn't skyrocket because we saw we saw him, uh, Liam Neeson play him in a movie. Bane's first appearance, and by that time, there was talk, and I remember there was talk, oh, Bane, you know, but it, it didn't do anything to Bane's, uh, much to Bane's first first appearance that, that's noticeable. Um, y- you know, those films still didn't really impact the comic book market yeah. like the MCU connected universe has, or even, you know, in the more recent past, the Star Wars connected universe under the Disney and MCU plus umbrella uh, has done over the last two years. So there's and, something to say with how comic book fans connect, pun intended, to a connected cinematic universe. Yeah, and on top of that, if DC came out and made movies that were not connected whatsoever and were made well, I'd be okay with that. But they did connect them. They we did, we're not connecting them. They did that when mm-hmm. they brought together the Justice yep. League and they had all these. They're the ones who said, "Well, Marvel did it. We have to do it." If they yep. came out and made an Aquaman, a Wonder Woman, you know, a Batman, a Superman, and none of those were connected, and none of those characters are connected, and they gave us a good villain, which is what DC sucks at. You need a good villain to make a good movie. If you gave us a good villain with a good storyline, I don't need to see Wonder Woman's boyfriend in parachute pants. We're gonna we're gonna consume that and we're gonna like it. But DC said we're gonna make these movies and we are going to connect them, and they did it terribly. 
I'm we're gonna end on that point for uh hottest comics, uh top ten hottest comics. <laughs> that is the top ten hottest comics of the week. Wait, are we still on that? Actually, this conversation spun out from Superman 10 Cent Adventure. Sorry, anyway, yep. <laughs> I'm just trying to find a great edit point for uh, for when we when we just post uh the top ten hottest comics. But we'll con- we can continue on this conversation. I'm happy to do it. I don't know what Roger's uh uh schedule is for the rest of the night, but it goes what, what Roger, what you said. Yeah. Just produce a good movie. Yeah. Just give produce a good, a good movie. Give us a good villain. Start don't with that. Us, don't give us nonsense. Start with that. Yep. We don't need humor. We don't need, you know, just give us a good movie with a good story and a good villain. That's I don't it. need it. I don't need it to be connected. No, I mean, no, but you're right though. They they went down this path. Yeah. And now they're stuck. Now it's going to be hard to just wipe everything clean and be like, you know, we're going to do our own thing. This is the which they kind of they're kind of doing too without actually acknowledging it with Joker, right? I think there's a they that's may come not, out. Come on, that's not a, that's not a DC film, right? Robert no. Pattinson's Batman's going to be in some that, other. Universe. That's going to. I'm okay with that though. But that's you know, there's that's a that's the Batman. You can't take a movie called the Joker, give it a different backstory, and say that it's a DC movie. I'm sorry, I, I don't. Well, that's, I that's hated that movie. I hated that movie. I fell asleep five times trying to watch the damn thing. <laughs> it's a stupid movie. And if they make a second, it's tragic. I, I agree with you, Roger. I, I didn't hate the movie. I thought it was a decent movie, but I agree with you 100% that um, it's just, it's like, it's Warner Brothers saying, well, we have these properties. Let's milk the the property because, it, and here's the thing about that Joker. Joaquin Phoenix, great actor, but that Joker couldn't go go up against the Batman. It wouldn't no. work. It, it wouldn't work. Like no, he was a weak lunatic. Yeah. <laughs> just it was horrible. He yeah. wasn't he wasn't he wasn't a crazy mastermind. Yep. He was a Luke a, a weak lunatic. Yep. I think the thing that was so alluring about the Joker was the performances. I thought they were yeah, outstanding. Yeah, Doug Bratton freaking nails it right there with that comment. What did he say? Joker was the taxi driver. You remember that movie Taxi oh, Driver? Yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Like you right. give me a movie like that and don't try to sell it as that's the Joker, I might like it a little more. Yeah. Because in its own, it's it's an intense movie. Yeah. And again, us as comic book fans are a bit critical of the characters. Again, we love. It's just DC's a mess. And we don't say mess, don't we, mess with we, the Joker. <laughs> we, what's that? Yeah. Don't mess with the Joker. I mean. Iconic. Like iconic. Like and like that's what we want to say. Like, honestly, just come up with a damn strategy, DC. We we want these characters to do well. It's not like you, you, a lot of people are like, oh, that's a Marvel fanboy, and they hate on um, DC, or uh, oh. vice versa. DC fanboy, they hate on. Um, we want good comic book films. Yeah. We want good comic book content based on the stuff we grew up reading and loving. And uh, uh, DC has not executed on that th- those kinds of uh, ancillary content that revolves around the comic books. And honestly, they're not doing great in the comic book market, in my opinion, as well. There's a few titles yeah. here and there. I think Nightwing is outstanding. Uh, Swamp Thing is outstanding. But yeah, other than that, like... Thing. Har- Actually, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm having fun reading Harley. Harley's a pretty good read. Right? I haven't gotten into Harley, but a lot like okay. it's Future State. I thought was shit, except for Wonder Woman. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, the yeah Yara I, Yara Flora and Wonder Woman. She was great, but yeah, like I love, uh, love that character. Uh, but I think Raj, we had you on a year ago, a little well, a little less than a year ago. But we were talking about how excited we were about Future State and the diversity they had there. Yeah. They didn't execute, in my opinion. Overall. No, they didn't. They didn't. Other than I'm really enjoying the other history of the DC universe. That's yes, a, that, that is a great good. read. Very, very great good. read. Uh, but other than that, you're right. They just threw a bunch of characters out there. They didn't do what I was hoping they were going to do when we talked about it a year ago or whatever. I did read every single book that came out for Future State, and it became. I did a review every week on our show, and some of them were quite comical because I, if it was garbage, I let you know. It's just I yeah. couldn't even. You know, this is garbage. I wouldn't. I didn't even put it in a bag and a board. I threw it away. Like <laughs> you know, there was there was just some stories that were just so terrible. I couldn't even make it through the book, but. It, and there were yeah. some interesting characters come out. I'm glad Yara is getting her own book. I have mm-hmm. read the first. I have read the first one. It was very, uh, you know, pulled you right in, right, right off the bat. So I'm happy about that, and hope they do that character justice. But um, uh, Bravo Comics brings up a really good point. Maybe the problem is they're listening too much, as in DC, possibly to younger consumers who didn't grow up with the same love and respect. I think the executives are listening too much and don't know these characters at all. Like how <laughs> you grew up as a fan. Yeah. Feige got into production, and Feige's like, yo, this could work, creating a universe. And when they announced Iron Man and what they were going to plan on doing, that blew that blew my mind. I'm like, what? Huh? Like, you know, um, so 
Feige, Feige does tip the hat to fans, but he knows what works. And he also, you know, let's step back and plan this before we start filming. Yes. Let's, yeah. You know, you 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 have yep. they had a plan. I mean, the fact that yep. that uh, uh, Samuel L. Jackson shows up in every movie showed you that they had a plan from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Did they know they were going to end up in civil war? Maybe not, but they knew this is the direction we're going to go, and we're yep. going to grow from there. And this is all going to be connected. DC's like, hey, we can do that. Let's do this movie. Wet yep. toilet paper. Wet toilet paper. Yep. Oh crap! I got no more toilet well, paper to wipe my butt. It's like it's really like the executive said. Well, we have as much money as Disney. We could do it too. Yeah. And that and that's all they think they need. Money, you know, big studio money, big actors and direct whatever and we could do what they we don't we don't yeah. Feige and team knew like we don't haste makes waste. Yeah. Haste makes waste. They Feige and team said we're going to sit here for 12 years before we climax. Yeah. You know, and they did. And where, we're gonna build it. You're we're gonna, gonna build, build it. We're gonna build DC. the foundation, and we're gonna build the skyscraper yeah. and the foundation first. And yeah. they made us a solid foundation. Yeah. Yeah. MC, uh, MCU did have a plan. That's why we we're in phase two. Actually, we're in phase four. <laughs> so yeah. they definitely had a plan. But but DC's reactionary, right? DC saw what Marvel was doing, and yeah. they're like, oh, exactly. Got to be. We can do that. Whereas it can't, can't be a successful business that way. You cannot be reactionary. You have to no. forge your own way, right? Yes. You have to figure it out on your own. By the way, guys, this is our Q&A section. If you have questions, please ask. If not, we are going to call it a night. That's not a threat, not a promise. It's just a <laughs> fact. I just want to throw it out there. It's been a long week for all of us. And Doug, Doug guys, knows. He heard my future state um, reviews. Who has? <laughs> Doug Bratton. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, he, yeah, he's he's – Wait. They were, uh, yeah, we, uh, I, I, I got some laughs out of some, especially Everett and Dave. There were a couple times where they lost their breath. Uh, it was just <laughs> because I'm like, you know, the Aqua, you know, the Aquaman one with the, the, the girl, you know, she like, she lost her foot and then she used a fish to grow a new foot. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. She had, and then like two books where the people who were part of the species that she took to make her new foot were chasing her down on an island saying, give us our friend back. And it was her foot. I'm, sh- I'm still making this up, man. This I got to is- look this up. Wow. <laughs> I still have some of the fish states that I haven't read. Fish foot, I like yeah. the, uh, Thank you, Sith. That's where fish foot came from. Fish foot. Hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. I like the just- Justice League Dark one. That was decent. I hated the Justice yeah. League one. What I Justice hated about Dark was was Justice League Dark, Dark was like in the back of another book. Like I, like It was in the back of Justice yeah. League, yeah. which was had their own book. They were better. Yeah, that one just- was better. Yeah. Yeah, Justice League was terrible, too. Uh, Steve Bradley, do you guys think Black Panther 25 Gleason cover is going to pop? It hasn't popped yet, so I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't see it popping like what, Amazing Spider-Man is, 55. Yeah, what does pop even mean? Yeah, I, think you know, I, mean, I think the Gleason there is done. Like, yeah, I think he's going to yeah, put out good books, so nobody's going to go crazy for him. No, yeah, it's a great yeah, cover, it, yeah, Amazing they're great covers. covers. I love it. There's going to be some demand for them, yeah. but don't don't buy them because you think they're going to pop. Yeah. Not not like the original one did right off the bat. Amazing that, Spider-Man, that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that yeah. virgin popped right off the bat. People went nuts for it. It's been overdone with Carnage Venom. Now I have, I have one that's Tiggerverse. Tiggerverse. Yep. No the way. Tigger, yeah, yeah. It's here on the cover. Oh my god. Yeah, it's getting a little. <laughs> I mean, he's, it's talented, but like honestly, I I don't. Uh, did Amazing Spider-Man even pop? Absolutely, that thing popped. Especially yeah, uh, the virgin one, the black virgin. Yeah. One. And then they had the 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 second uh, print one in fifty, the all white. That white thing, one. Yeah. That's yeah, that thing's true. hot. So. Definitely pop, but but if you guys are expecting, I know somebody who went all in on what was the red one? Was that the second or third print? Second, all in, bought a hundred copies, thinking that they would make tenfold of what they paid for, and it just it just didn't. I mean, I bought this because I got to have all the colors once they made them, right? Sure. (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Mike Madison, yo, what it do, guys? I love the show. We love that you watch it. Thank you so much. Uh, Make sure you sub up the three men in the basement, brother. What's that? Make sure you sub up the three men in the basement. That's what we, yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. Not only sub them up, follow them on Instagram. Raj is one yeah. third of the super powered group, the three men in the basement. Hit up uh, three men in the basement on uh, IG, guys. The link is down below. 
If you yes, like good comic book content, if you like cranky Canadians, if you yeah. like uh, interviews with yeah. top notch talent from the comic industry, you're gonna want to sub up three men in a basement. Their link is below. Sub them up. I I, I don't know what more can we say, Chris? Like honestly, like honest, and what more can we do? Like Raj, you know, you may not like the Habs, but you'll like Raj and his comic book opinions. Oh. <laughs> and by the way, major props to you, Raj, for joining us tonight. Game two of the yeah. uh, Montreal Canadian series against the Winnipeg Jets saw that they won one to nothing. Well, that's uh, good stuff, man. I would not have shown up on anybody else's show if it was, like, <laughs> if it was the Flyers or the Sixers. So I, mad props. We really, when really – When you got teenagers and you got YouTube and you got sports, you've learned to juggle everything, you know? It's amazing. Honestly, I have a five-year-old and I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, and, so. and not for nothing, the crying doesn't get any better. It doesn't? I have, and I have a daughter who's her first year in college. I mean, when she graduated high school – just like a little baby. I don't they were showing Watch, some watching her perform dance like she went to school of the arts. She's performing on stage like a little baby dude. So all right. I'll tell you <laughs> I'll tell you when I first lost they they played this montage of because they did virtual all year and they played this montage of all the projects that they did to this sappy song and I just was like, fuck, what the hell's coming out of my eyes right now? This is oh. <laughs> like I was like, oh my God, I was not expecting it hit me hard. I was like, anyway, so Thank you. I may I may ask you some questions along the way. Yeah, right, I'm here. Honor. Yeah, I'm uh, here. I I just I just watched my son graduate the eighth grade. He was in a charter school from kindergarten to eighth grade, the same school, and he got chosen as the class speaker. And yeah, I I was I was feeling it too. So yeah. <laughs> we don't talk about this enough. It's okay to cry, guys. Yeah. It definitely is, and it goes both ways. Like the last week during, so my son's a sophomore in high school. And by the third game, he was uh, starting defensive midi for lacrosse, mm. uh, varsity. And he came across the field and took some kid out. Like, he checked him in hockey, and the kid went flying. And I cried. Man, I started crying. Like, that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. That is absolutely amazing. I'm excited to get her sports. I've seen some of your lacrosse pictures on your Instagram. By the way, I'm going to say this one more time. Probably not one more. But follow Roger. Okay, on Instagram, follow Three Men in a Basement on Instagram and follow them uh, on YouTube. But yeah, I've seen some of your Instagram and you going to the games, and that's that's got to be an amazing, amazing uh, feeling. Watching him play sports is phenomenal. He's I, quarter, I quarterback on football. He's playing lacrosse. Just watching him play sports is not much more things that I enjoy doing. I I, I can't wait. Uh, by the way, nerds being geeks takes his dog to daycare sometimes and cries. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I'm guessing uh, a lap, I'm guessing I, a lap I, dog. I, I got to give a shout out. Uh, Tony is in the house, president of EGS. I, that's nice. why I pulled this up a second ago because uh, I saw Tony in the chat. I just want to give a big uh, thank you to Tony since he's here uh, for the AOK -okay of the awesome 9.8 uh, EGS Miles Morales Spider Man 25 UF4 cover swipe variant. Nice. Yeah. That is such, Tony, that is beautiful. Beautiful presentation. Guys, yeah. this was a beautiful show. Roger, thank you again so much for oh, joining thanks me. Thanks for having me. This is a lot of fun. Uh, again, you definitely made it. We love how opinionated you are. We love, honestly, what you do for the community, uh, the comic book community on YouTube, and, uh, you know, the, the co Kinetic Comic Swap, all that, all the stuff that you guys do. Keep, keep at it because, again, we are supporters of you guys, and I can't tell you guys the audience enough. Please follow them on Instagram and YouTube. Check out their shows, especially Monday at 7 p.m., the Cranky Canadian. Raj is a great interview. Uh, interviewer, he gets great guests. Please. This, month, this Monday, Doug Bratton is going to be my guest. Doug Bratton, who's sure you check it out. Who's here, and he says, watching your kids play sports is just the best, mm -hmm. and we appreciate that input right there because I, I can't wait to see her start playing team sports, my daughter. Uh, but anyways, guys, thank you all so much for joining us. Again, guys, fresh from the comic shop. You all know what to do. Uh, we, we've laid out all the directions below in the, the description. We, you will find out the winner of Fresh from the Comic Shop on Tuesday. Chris and I will post the finalist, Sicilian Comics 1998. Congratulations on being a finalist. Uh, Roger picked your book. But again, guys, uh, thanks for joining us. It was an amazing show. Chris, Raj, any last comments here? I just appreciate you guys having me on. This is a lot of fun, a lot of, a lot of great talk. I love the way you have it segmented and all the different uh, things we got to talk about. The, uh, you know, that pickup, I forget, I'm, the FF, TCS. You know, yeah, FFTCS is pretty cool. I, I, I really enjoyed it. I think that's a great way to get the community involved. 
Um, you guys are doing great things, man. I enjoy watching you, and I'm glad now I was able to be on your live show. Thank you so much. We we greatly appreciate it. I wish we got into more arguments, but maybe, <laughs> maybe, keep maybe saying that, not crazy. Who's saying that Shazam's a good movie, and uh, you and I will get into plenty of arguments. <laughs> I, was I, I still have yet to see Shazam, so I'm staying out of that Don't one. Don't waste your time, brother. Don't waste your time. Man. <laughs> Chris, your final words of the show for this evening. You get the final say. <laughs> My final words of the show. Man, well, uh, to Roger, yes, again, thank you so much uh, for coming on. You know, having an awesome guest on every week just is, you know, uh, frosting on the cake for us, and it's truly appreciated. Um, I did a live stream earlier today, my Friday Night Live, and my theme was don't tell me how to collect comics. So I want to end on a final note here, and I want everyone in the chat to say it with me, don't tell me how to collect comics. And what that means is keep doing what you do, collect how you want to collect, because guess what? We're all going to do some things differently. We're all going to do things similarly, but we're all going to end up here every Friday night on the cannon, hanging out and having fun. So that's what I got for you. Well said. All right, y'all take care. We will see you next week, 9 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Be safe until then. Have a great week. Good night.